Week 52 of the Geek Week in Review. And in this show, we are celebrating our one year anniversary. Stay tuned. The Geek Week in Review. To the Geek Week in Review with me, Jacob's Toys, of course, the wonderful one and only Super Sorrel, and our good friend Brian Speaks Geek in his discotheque of geekness. There, <laughs> if you're celebrating them on here, we are, of course, we are. Um, I very almost went in my birthday suit, and I thought no one needs to see that. <laughs> um, if you are watching us on YouTube, then as always, please do like, share, subscribe, and all of those things, and check the description below for the gents' details and give them a follow if you don't already do so. And if you're one of our podcast listeners, then make sure that you carry on downloading and sharing, etc. We do appreciate you guys over on the podcast. And if you're on Facebook or Instagram, you can also check out the Geek Week in review over there. Whew. OK, so week 52 it is our one year anniversary. And obviously, we've got a lot of stuff to, uh, to talk about anyway, because it's been a very busy week for um, Marvel and Star Wars and all of those things um but before we do go on to that i'm going to say one thing and that is that we have got a geek week in review website that we're launching in um collaboration with this week's show um so you can go over there and you can check out links to all the previous shows you can check out links to um all of our uh, individual pages and, and give us a follow that way and we've also got links to all the things that i've just descri- described so Going forward, I'm not going to have to give the big spiel. I'll just go, go to Geek Week in Review, or actually, sorry, go to geekweekinreview.co.uk. Check us out over there. Um, there are some parts of the website that's still being built, so there's a couple of kind of coming soon pages and stuff, but it is over there, and all of our stuff is. We should try yeah. and add, like, a voiceover every time they go to a page that's not finished yet, and I'll just go, <laughs> coming soon. You know, and just do, like, a, just everything like on it. Well, that, you've just recorded the voiceover, so let's we'll see if we can get that on. <laughs> um, in the world. But in all fairness, um, do check it out. Um, and obviously, if you want to follow any of the pages or, or any of the guys or anything, uh, it's all over there. So that makes our intro a lot easier, mm. and it makes you lot watching or listening uh, the opportunity to kind of find us and, and stuff a lot easier as well. So... This so week. before we start, by the way, can I just say Go. that uh, I did my um, review of Ula and Salacious Crumb from the Power of the Force line. Yep. And while, while, whilst we're talking about like silly voiceovers and stuff, he uh, one of my uh, subscribers put a thing on, a comment on, and it, do you know what? I would watch this. I'm telling you, it says, coming soon to Disney+. Plus. She was a slave. He was a henchman. But secretly, they are galactic enforcers trying to take down a galaxy far, far away. In fall, tune into Ula and Crumb, Space Enforcers, only on Disney+. Plus. That Plus, sounds I'm, like a good show. Am I the only one that says that sounds better than Kenobi right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. I'd definitely watch it. Ula and Crumb. I have to what address, by the way, if, if we got people watching, I, I haven't, in, in celebration for the one-year show, I haven't <clears> aged. <throat> 50 years and decided to wear a chain <laughs> around my glasses. Uh, these are actually <laughs> headphones. Um, it's because my over headphones that you normally, my Princess Leia ones that everyone normally sees me in, uh, I think mm. I just synced them to too many devices. You know when it just starts getting technically weird? Because even though um, I look 50, I'm actually, by technical standards, um, 80. So I didn't know how to unsync <laughs> everything. So I just got a different pair of headphones. But it does, I've only noticed when we started recording and sat down, it does make me look like I'm about to check my accounts like this. With the uh, glasses chain at the end of my nose. I, I am not going to lie. I actually use a separate microphone, so it's... Well, it's like a, it's like a pistol. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Mate. You pulled it out. I was like, he's got a glasses chain and he's packing. He's like, got a mother flipping that? gun. I've got a ruddy gun. What is that? What oh, oh, I'm practically a full-time YouTuber at this point, and this is my camera and microphone. It's a phone. And like you've got like, this whole high tech buddy equipment. I've got to have the microphone because when I do my voice stuff, so um, you know, because when you're doing voice stuff, you can't record on your. Well, you can, but for TikTok, but if you're doing it for for money, then you need to use your money. decent mic. Yeah, money. that makes sense. That does and make I'm, sense. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been sat watching the Queen this evening, Ryan, and you do look like her right now with that little chain around your neck. Like, in my dear me. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That's that's also a very subtle, nice taking the piss out of me again. It's a nice compliment. I'm, in I'm this, surprised uh, no one's come after me yet for the lack of beard. Nobody's even noticed. You know what? I was just about to mention the fact that you haven't got a beard. Like, I just assumed you sneezed and it fell off. 
Is that not what happened? Is that how, is and that I did, not how it works? I did watch one of your videos earlier, so I realised that there was a, a distinct lack of facial hair, but what, does it uh, just co cut too close to the face and then decide to take it all off, or was it uh, it's getting It'll hot, grow so back the beard goes? Greater numbers. So I, I was I was trimming it down, and my six year old daughter decides to come in and go and go uh, tie your it. <laughs> Thanks for that. A big chunk of fur comes off. Like that's it done now. Oh, I you, realized you should it. have left. You should have left this patch, put like a bandage over it, and then people <laughs> ask you about it going like, I saved as many as I could. <laughs> you know what? While we're on the on the subject of facial hair and stuff, I realized <laughs> that that two two of my four children I have got four, but two of my four children who are under three have never seen me with short hair and no beard they've only ever known me with long hair and a beard like that's weird <laughs> i knew you with big spiked out hair and proper oh. clean shaven baby face yeah 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 that was not that not, was... not like the disgruntled Gen kenobi you've become but you know more like I know. episode one I know. Kenobi I've, that we... <laughs> I've, I've kind of I, i've aged through the kenobi years but while we're talking about kenobi what a lovely lovely um segment um let's let's go straight in with kenobi because episode four it this was episode polarizing. four technically yeah it literally was episode four. opinions i think in the group on this one okay let's 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 go around yay or nay was it a good one yes or no i don't think yes. it was i liked I, it but i was disappointed I in some elements yeah that's I why really i think it was a poor it. one I, it was it was a repeat of the video game, literally, like scene for scene. It was taken yeah. straight out of the ending to um, what do you call it, Jedi Fallen Order. Literally, mm -hmm. the how the, the way he gets in was exactly like Cal Kestis. The way yeah. he does the force, the force thing with the water, that, that's what Cal Kestis did to Vader. The Inquisitor with the chair and the you know that whole scene of interrogation was taken straight from the game as well. They just recycled yeah. the storyline. I don't yeah. remember the chair scene from the game. Yeah, so there was a scene, it's like a flashback scene where you see the Inquisitor, oh, how flash, she got to yeah, become, flashback, how she got to become the, the Inquisitor. The yeah. More, it was in that scene, though, wasn't it, where you saw like her true past and stuff, and she gets like all the needly things on her and all that crap. And like, there wasn't like the Leia tomb, was about to... and there wasn't the assistance from an, an undercover Imperial officer. We've, but we know about the tomb from Rebels because they used they used Kanan's master's corpse to draw them to the Inquisitor's building, didn't they? In, in Rebels, yeah, they were using use that already. Ship. Yeah. You know what? The tomb. My personal opinion on it was the tomb scene was awesome. That was cool, but I do think they missed a chance to drop in a cameo from Somebody even else. just yeah, even just an obscure well, had, Jedi. Um, it doesn't have to be. Well, they had be... Terra Sanub, um, who like or Sanub Sanub, which he was actually a, quite a, like a good character from the Clone Wars. So he yeah. was the same. Of uh, these species wise, he's the same as like Yak Face. Um, he's that sort of almost like kind of camel type face but i um, think he was but... too obscure the the kind of the the general kind of i think too obscure if wouldn't... you don't if you're not a diehard star wars fan because i knew that was straight away and i got i did a bit of a mephesto you know the leo dicaprio yeah. like bit you know no, the I, screen. That's, but that's uh, what i mean is that yeah. for those really diehard fans i don't know who they who that was but i think for the not even oh, yeah, the spoiler general... alert, by the way sorry yeah, spoiler yeah, alert. it's all right it came out <laughs> it came out nearly a week ago um but I just, I just, you know, like even something from like, was it um, episode will, two where they were, where there was that big Jedi fight and the and yeah, Mace Windu yeah, cut. Most yeah. of those characters have been so expanded in Rebels and um, what's well, so Clone Wars and stuff. I kind of feel like it's a bit difficult now because they've probably got so much more extra stuff to do with them to then confirm and commit to them being in there. You well, the easy one, the there, easy yeah. one. There was the easy one which I wanted to see. Which was, um, you know, the the master from Rebels, Luminara and Billy. She couldn't because we know she's there at that point. She's already dead. Yeah. She was, you know, and that, that was the person that who Star Destroyer got destroyed, didn't it? With her on it. But that's after this. Rebels is set after this. Sure. This is pre Rebels, so they already... could have. Oh, God. She's already dead at this point because it's post Episode Three, before Rebels. So it's the perfect time setting to shove her in it, and then it, at I least would... you see where the Grand Inquisitor got the corpse from. True, but I would also say that in Rebels, it's a very different kind of containment unit. It's actually, plus also the, the point of that containment unit is that it generates a force presence still. That's why it's in, she's her body's in that special container. So it would be separate from those because obviously it's there to generate 
a force beacon that people think they can sense her and then track the number. I seriously need to go outside more. Uh, I am knowing this too deep. Um, yeah. but yeah. All right, just just leave now. Oh. Go and like, yeah. go for a run. Like, just go in the just... park and sit there and look at some birds. And but, um, I was going to say, just on, on the episode as well, I'm not sure if it's just because I am a father of a daughter, but how how that scene with Leia where they're going to interrogate her and they've got her in the chair and she's screaming for help, that hit a bit too home for me. I didn't like that. It felt uncomfortable. It yeah. felt like they drew that out too long. Yeah. I thought Obi-Wan should have arrived sooner. That way she's screaming, help, help, someone help me. That was like almost genuine terror in that actress's voice. Yeah, well, yeah, she played that really not a, well not in a dark way but like the thing about this series and it, it, what, the whole series so far that seems to be really polarizing people the people are saying about like how dark it is and stuff like that but like good because this is meant to be when the empire is at its most terrifying it's like meant to symbolize that there is nothing the empire won't do and like but dark when... Vader's become terrifying in this again like reaver i actually think is quite a scary character i know people keep going on about the actors but i actually think it's fine because she just seems like an unhinged you know revenge driven lunatic and you know who would stop at nothing even like torturing children like i actually felt really tense on an edge watching that episode that's why i really enjoyed it because actually it wasn't like i was just sitting down and watching star wars i got like really sort of you know when you're like at the edge of the seat going like even though i know kenobi has to save Leia because obviously i've seen all the other films and stuff i still felt because <coughs> like i actually thought like oh my god they're actually going to torture her before kenobi gets there mm. and actually that's where the peril still came in because there's no peril knowing that they both survive but there is peril created and tension because you don't want to see her get tortured. So that's but how see, they that's, sort of supplemented that. But see, for the same reasons, that's why it was kind of a weaker episode for me. Like the, the three elements, out, out of all of the episodes we've had so far, this was the one that felt very predictable for me because we knew she was going to get saved because, you know, yes, it was very, there was a road there, but we did know the outcome. So anything that happened i just kind of felt a little bit like we're going through the motions because we know that she's not going to stay there and the parallels with the computer game was there as well for me and it was just i don't know i just it didn't feel my, my, the standout moment for me was when leia like kind of played possum sort of thing in the in the interrogation where she was talking about oh yeah i need to speak to my dad first and then reva was like nah like, i've got you and and Leia's face kind of switched, and it was like, wow, that kid is, she is switched on. Um, that, that was the standout bit for me in the episode. I, I enjoyed it as a whole, and going back and watching it all again when we've concluded, it, it won't kind of, I won't skip over that episode, but I, I don't know, I just think after last week where you had Darth Vader and Obi-Wan getting dragged through fire and stormtroopers and all sorts, this just, just fell a little bit too far for me, but... But and, I, well, I and, the fa- and the fact that it was also just episode four rehashed, yeah, literally, pretty much. Save, pretty saving much. Princess Leia from the big bad, big, the big bad bodies. Yeah, yeah, but um, of course it is. If you put it in that basic a term, it literally was there, wasn't it? It was a bunch of rebels say that about a lot of base, episodes of Clone Wars or Rebels or Mando or Boca Boba. If you put them in down to basic elements, you can make them any of them sound like any of the others. Yeah, one, th- one thing that always got me with those kind of characters, like rebels and stuff, was we didn't know at the time we didn't know their future. No. Every episode, you knew they were going to write someone off, and that like the the bit where they killed off Kanan is still the most heart wrenching moment of, of Clone Wars for me. Of Re- Rebels, oh. sorry, for me. Without a doubt. And, like, and I the, did, I the showdown. Not see it coming. No, and like I... the showdown with Ahsoka and Vader. There's so many scenes in Rebels that were like so hard hitting. And I, I think I think they've been better story written than than Kenobi has been. I think whilst Kenobi's good, I'm not bashing it. It's good. I've enjoyed it, but I think they could have done a better story. It hasn't progressed yeah. very much. I I think my my prediction for it, and this is kind of based on the fandom mm. as well, is that I think something with I think the big element or the big reveal is going to be to do with Reva, like that. Oh, there's yeah. something big with her coming in the next two episodes that's going to make her the character that a lot of us expect her to be. And I think that all the hate for her at the beginning that people gave her, people are going to kind of be eating their their hats when they see the conclusion of the story. That's kind of my hope. Um, I think she's going to turn, I think she's going to turn coat at the end. Um, And I think she's going to end up either, either being the character that's killed off because she's not in the Inquisitor ranks later on. So where'd she go? She either leaves the Inquisitors or she's killed. One of the two. 
Yeah. So she's either going to become a, she's either going to become a rebel and get her way out, or she's going to be killed and she'll probably die for a reason of redemption to give her story arc some damn meaning. I'm also thinking that I said this to you guys after this episode. Ice Cube Junior, uh, O'Shea Jackson Junior. There is no way he's in this just as a small little role. He's a big actor. He was in the NWA movies. He's done lots of films that are like Emmy, like Emmy Oscar winning jobs. Yeah. And and Ice Cube still meant to be in this at some point. He's still on the cast list, so um, he's going to be in as well. But um, O'Shea Jackson Junior. I think he is the husband of Reva. I think that's going to be the storyline because the the whole in that episode there was a lot of talking about he that they both lost so much. And I think I think they're talking about each other, not not that she because we're all assuming his wife is dead, and I don't think she yeah. is. I think she's just been cap, been captured and turned into the Inquisitor. I think it's going to end up being Rev as his missus. They're about the right age. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, that's my that. judgment. I think she'll get killed by Fader or the actual Grand Inquisitor. Who's mm. Yeah, it's Grand Inquisitor has got to come back. Well, I hope we, I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't yet. Because then it gives us options for another series or a different mm-hmm. series or something. There is for that, isn't there already? Yeah. Well, there's um, a lot of people saying that we're going to get either a Vader series or someone's even said a Reva series is like circling around now, like she's going to get her own spin off. <laughs> but um, I can't, I, after everything that's come out of this, I can't see that. I, mean, I don't know why. No. And um, I think she'll be killed off. I and off the back of that, just, uh, killing series. Off of the back of that, we had uh, Obi Wan Wednesdays, which is Hasbro's kind of big Star Wars reveal day, um, and we got all the uh, the retro figures, which were quite cool. If that's your, if that's your your bag, yeah, it um, was it's really good. exciting, and then really butt hurty for people who don't collect retro, who are just moan about it, going like, "Oh, but why aren't they vintage? What a waste of figures!" Well, they're not for you, so shut up. Um, it's like it was a really good lineup of like figures, actually. Like I was, it just actually, but it's really nice to get some more villains in rent, retro style, because like um, you know, especially where you've got like uh, because you can use some of them in Rebels retro if that makes sense, because obviously Fourth Brother is in Rebels. Um, so you got the three Inquisitors, um, obviously Reva, Grand Inquisitor, and the Fourth Brother. You've got Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, in his sort of like a uh, disheveled Tatooine rat sort of survivor g- garb, you've got a new Darth Vader as well. Which um, some people have gone like, oh, you can't redesign Darth Vader. But the thing is, Darth Vader needed another figure when it was the Kenner line because you only have ever had the one from A New Hope, and though that first sort of twelve figures are so different in style in a lot of ways to the later ones, especially like lightsabers. You can only have Darth Vader with a lightsaber stuck up his arm and stuff like that. You know, you couldn't hold it like you know. When you had like the beds been Luke and stuff like that, it looked very odd. So it's really cool to get an updated fa- like Vader. I think they've done that really well. No, I I still remember the aesthetics of how that felt to play with as a kid. And I got yeah, this bring, okay. figure, and it was it was like cool. Like... It's pretty awesome. And then we got the droid as well, uh, Ned B. And I will get several of those and customize them because I really like their design. <laughs> I like I like that character as well. I think that there's more to him. I think we're going to see more about him. Yeah, him. Is him the right pronoun for a droid? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It. For, uh, I don't know. No, it, I can't see the, it. Them. I don't know. Ned being. Sentient being. Um, um, so that... Oh. <laughs> the thing is, right, with... Um, there's been a lot of moaning, like, in the groups about... It's like, don't forget, we've got two more weeks of Obi-Wan Kenobi reveals, and everyone that's going, but they should have been in the TVC line. Well, guess what's going to happen this week, Mother Trekkers? All the vintage stuff will pop out because we've done all the retro now. We've had all the black series, so guess what? That that, that leaves vintro, uh, the vintage left, and they're not going to miss them. They're going to do exactly. them. And then the last, you, my point exactly. And did, then you the last create, did you just create a really awesome new life, vintro? Vintro, <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's the COVID talking. Copyright. Copyright. No, I like yeah. that. I think vintro works. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and it's just like, and then the, the final week of reveals will be all the spoiler stuff that they don't want to tell you about right now. Yeah. Like we might get, we might get, because we still don't have a Leia figure yet, which surprises me, because I know she's not been very well received, but I think we still need her in the line to complete it. I think she's a standout character in this show. Yeah. I really do. Totally I really agree. do. Um, it's just Star Wars fans being Star Wars fans. It is. Well, <laughs> there's there is the we are the most to- toxic fandom as well as being the most loving fandom in the oh. same hand. Without a doubt, yeah. without a doubt. Speaking it's of like, Leia, did you did you notice the two little things that I was reading reading up and that um, 
Carrie Fisher had a bird called Lola, and that's why they've called the that's toy Lola. Lola. Everyone's seen her. But have you also oh, seen the? Uh, cool. Yeah, there's pictures of her as a as a, as a young girl holding Lola, oh, and then they put it side by side, and that was that's why it's called Lola. Uh, but there's also another kind of theory going around, and the way she's got all her hair braided. Mm. Have you seen that one? Yeah. And then when they're on the the transport, one of the braids has fallen down in the place of the Padawan like right. position. So they're saying like, is that foreshadowing? Because you know, there's so much they could do with that. Like they could essentially do the whole Jedi journey for her. Like you know, who knows? Who knows? The gay. They finally got her to call him Ben as well now. So now at least now we know why she calls him Ben in New Hope. Mm-hmm. No other ones. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, so is that all for Star Wars, you think? Yeah, because yeah. we, I mean, yeah. we could go on at Brett and talk. Well, I could definitely go on at Of course you could. Of course you could. <laughs> so let's move, let's move on to the other big thing that happened on Disney Plus this week, which was groundbreaking, let's be perfectly honest, mm. and that was the episode one of Miss Marvel. And that has been phenomenally well received, which, love, you know... Love, 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 love that, ep- that first episode. Oh, I thought was, it was incredible. <laughs> to stand out as an episode, as it was in style, like, you know... Yeah, just... the, the, the episode and writing Breath and storyline, yeah, all of that stuff is one thing, and the style is another thing. I think the style of it is brilliant. I think it's really well stylized, and that whole kind of... The, my favourite bit for me was the bit where they were going along and all the graffiti on the <laughs> yes. walls with all the different costume all the text ideas. Messages. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. oh, the text that messages the text as well. So clever. Yeah, just everything about it is just really, really cool. But the, the actual story, it, it's just been so well received, which I think is fantastic. And, you know, rightly so. It's, it's a good story to be told. It's um, a different story as well, which is like, it's not like... You know, there's more mystery and intrigue, and also it's the idea that someone is fanboying over like their their hero, and actually by the end of the episode they sort of have become almost the hero, power, yeah. yeah, become the hero. It's like yeah. the other thing as well. Like I, I did not, I don't really know anything about the <clears> character. <throat> I've only ever seen pictures of the character. I've never read because my Marvel comic knowledge is very limited. I'll be honest, mm. other than very select comic book runs that I followed. <clears> so. A lot of characters I don't know, but I've deliberately not looked up anything about Miss Marvel because I know some people were originally a bit peeved about the fact that the powers have changed. I think, oh, yeah. if I'm wrong, but like they've changed. The I decided, set, but... yeah, and I've decided to. There's no need for me to go and get my familiar with the character because I can just enjoy this as it is because it's been made for just someone to enjoy rather than like going. Yeah. You have to have read this comic and this comic and this comic, or you know, seen this film, this one. I don't even think you have to have seen Miss, uh, Captain mm. Marvel for this. It's just really well. It's such a good beginning. I'm already yeah. invested in the characters. I'm already invested in the story. And for something I thought like, oh, that just looks fun. I now really cannot wait for the next episode. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah. Did you? Uh, yeah. So the power set. They they change. She's essentially we won't go into huge details, but she was very similar to Reed Richards in regards to being able to extend the limbs and make things bigger. She could make herself bigger and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they've kind of stayed true to it in a respect because she did the whole reaching out and the big hands and all that kind of stuff. But they've made her have cosmic powers, which is a lot more in line with the Captain Marvel power set and the, the Monica Rambeau power, uh, Monica Rambeau power set and stuff. So, but I didn't actually see anyone complaining. Like I heard them complaining beforehand when they saw trailers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But after the episode, I, I didn't read any complaints yeah. about uh, the power sets are different or anything like it, that. Like it fit during it, it fit for the aesthetic of the program, the way it looked, the way, yeah. the way her power set looked. It looked like it belonged to her. It just, I think, her turning ridiculously big and having really long stretchy arms would just look cheesy. Yeah, it would. I, I like the fact that uh, yeah, I like the fact that her power set was quite you know updated, modern. Mm. You know, in in line with the fact that if you just had. I know that's what it is in the comic book, kind of like sh- sh- stretchy powers, really. But yeah. if she did have that kind of power set in this, what is she going to be a threat to someone like Captain Marvel or Thor? Is she going to be able to be a hero in that level? Yeah. No, she needs cosmic powers to be on that level with like your Captain Marvels, your Thors, your, you know what I mean? Your bigger heroes. I do have one complaint about the show. I need one complaint. And that mm. was that 
for anyone that's been to a convention, that Avengercon mm-hmm. was nowhere near busy or <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no. like chaotic enough. Like, you know, that was there should be en- cues. <laughs> and the entrance, yeah. The entrance was yeah. I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> what convention takes place at nine to eleven at night? I know we don't yeah. live in New York and things might be different out there, but conventions usually are in the daytime. Yeah, but it's, it is, I joke, I do joke. And I suppose, you know, that I, I did yeah, think that though, the same though. I genuinely was like, God, I wish the lines were that good at convention. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we just sc- scroll in, look at their pass, like, oh yeah, I got my ticket here. Yeah. We would have had bag checked, security. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> I would have had three yeah. dodgy looks, then I would have had to work out where the toilets are, <laughs> where the food is, you know, yeah. I would have had to get a mini map, you know, none no, of that was there. <laughs> Could have been a whole episode just navigating the convention. But <laughs> I, as a whole, I just think it was brilliant. Um, there's a couple of things that I'm looking forward to about it, and that is the, the crossover with Miss Marvel, like how is that going to be introduced? And I think it'd be great to see Miss Marvel, uh, Captain Marvel again on the screen and Again, that's another character that received a lot of hate at the beginning, but is somewhat coming into her own now and fans are kind of getting behind. And also the the kind of slip up in the credits with the, the Hayley Steinfeld mm. reference. Now, I don't know whether that's just someone being lazy in the credits department because the text, that text bubble mm. is exactly the same as it was in um, Hawkeye. So the, the people mm. doing the, the various bits. Um, but if they're not being lazy, that also opens up a very interesting possibility for kind of the Young Avengers or something along those lines to have kind of Kate Bishop, Miss Marvel, and various other ones that we've seen come along super as well. Squad. So yeah, <laughs> the super teams. Um, but yeah, but it was it was just a lot of fun. And then naturally, straight away afterwards, Hasbro released uh, from the Infinity Ultron wave the Miss Marvel action figure that we all knew was coming um and she was all right i like her i've i've got had all the versions of miss marvel that they've released and i think she looks cool her, com- her costume is pretty comic book accurate like there's there's very little that you can can complain about um which I leaves a, an action figure on. of him him dressed as the hulk because that <laughs> was, that made me the, laugh the so much yeah, when he jumps yeah, yeah. in the dad. Uh, that was that, that, that someone's going to make a customer oh. of that. <clears throat> and just while, while while we're on the subject of the dad, a lot of people are confused because she keeps calling her father Abu, uh, not father. Abu in is, is, is Urdu, I believe, for father. That is how okay. they say father. Because a lot of people, I saw so many people like commenting online saying, "Why why is she calling him Abu? Is she, you know is she calling him by his name? Is it uh, is that but that is yeah. his name?" And I saw loads of people getting confused by it. I believe that's Urdu for father. Okay, I like the, the, the mix of languages as well because it's accurate mm-hmm. and that is actually what happens in the real world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my friends from Zimbabwe, um, they speak Shona. And uh, I remember when he's speaking on the phone, it's really funny because he'll have conversations, but it'll be, it will move into like between Shona and English, like in a real roller coaster. <laughs> and so sometimes I'm looking, I'm like, how do you follow speaking? He goes, I don't know, you just sort of do. He goes, you just sort of it just sort of evolves and you just sort of speak both. He said, you should, cause it's easier to say things in English sometimes. And then it's easier to say things in Shona. He said, it's, it's uh, and I kind of liked that yeah. cause it was a real reflection of what sort of multicultural living is like. Um, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I mean, naturally I don't come from like a Muslim household or anything like that, but there was something really wholesome and, and just feel good about the way they portrayed the family setup as well. And I found myself like when the mum was like offering to make food for the <laughs> friend, he was like, no, I'm going to work. Let me pack your lunch. I was like, oh, yeah. I, I want one of my friend's mums to be like that with me. Like, <laughs> just just going, I'm, I'm here. Let me pack you a bag. Let me pack your lunch. Thank you. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I, 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 work, I love it. I work in a heavily, heavily multicultural office. And we obviously live in, like, we've been in Leeds and stuff. We've got a lot of, of Asian communities. And you can always tell when there's been a wedding or something at the weekend, because on Monday morning, the amount of food that will come into the office is insane. <laughs> and, you'll just, and you'll just get fed all day long. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, the loveliest people that just feed you. <laughs> one, Love it. That's awesome. One thing as well that I do want to point out, mm. because there's been a lot of people um, <clears throat> talking about, obviously, representation on screen and, how it's great to see representation on screen and you know for their children and daughters and sons and stuff to mm-hmm. see superheroes and stuff but for my daughter 
she she saw she she kind of saw stuff in it as well and it's a show that she because she's 11 now so she's at the age where you know she's watching all her different shows and stuff but she was really excited to watch it and came out of it kind of being this is a superhero i can get behind which i hadn't even thought about before that like all the other shows that we've seen like they've enjoyed them but there wasn't a young female superhero you know and it wasn't so even though there's representation there i think that it's it's touching people and, and kind of it, people are experiencing it on, on so many different levels and that's why this show is going to be easily one of the best shows of the year i think yeah and because like people will comment that like you know kate bishop obviously was there first she was she but i didn't find kate bishop relatable because of her like she had a bit more of a upbringing should we say a bit more oh, well, like. yeah. so well, kamala yeah, comes from yeah, Kamala comes from a very working class looking family. It's relatable yeah. to most people. Like the whole, no, you can't, you can't, you can't go with friends. You've got to come with me and do stuff for your brother. That's very relatable. <laughs> yeah. No, I Kate, love that. I, think about Kate Bishop as well. And I love Hawkeye. I've said this on numerous shows that like Hawkeye is my jam. But Kate Bishop is not a relatable character to most because A, Heidi Stanfield is a lot older than, than most of the, the kind of young teen viewers she's not a teen character like she's not a teen even though she's playing a late teen if that makes sense um but also as you say she comes from a very wealthy family like you know the attack in new york happened and she says i want a bow and arrow and she gets a bow and arrow and just the credit scene shows all of the things that she's all of the clubs that she's been involved in and if anyone's got kids clubs are not cheap <laughs> you know uh, you know, oh, I want to do this club. Okay, there goes my. Uh, <laughs> there goes also, my retirement. You know, it's just not as that's not a super. You know, being really good at archery is not a superpower. Do not come at Hawkeye, right? As, as Hawkeye come. said on do the not. Jimmy Kimmel, I'm as super. Okay, as they are. Ryan, I'm going to really upset you now, mate. But if that's your logic, then Batman has no space in the superhero genre. <laughs> no, he's not a superhero. Batman. <laughs> Batman's the world's greatest detective. He's not a superhero. What is he ever, when does he ever do any detective? We do, he's, 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 that's not right. Right. Sorry to any Batman fans here, but we've got to touch on this. His tagline is Batman, the world's greatest detective. When have you ever seen him doing any detective, any any detective work? The latest the Batman night. film. He's literally a detective film. You watched it's, it with me. Uh, Okay, he yeah. Solves <laughs> all the crimes for three hours not, of <laughs> No, but let's I not mean, forget. About the 1960s, I mean, a banana peel, the president. <laughs> oh no, Robin, he's gonna kill the president with a banana. I meant like kind of modern. Some Batman. days you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> it's modern Batman is just kind of like army surplus, kind of you know going out and killing all the bad guys. That like, not killing yeah, doesn't geez. kill, but it's they're not solving. Granted, I completely forgot about the most recent The Batman, but then that doesn't <laughs> say much about the film that I completely forgot about. But do not come at Hawkeye. That's my bottom line. Hawkeye is fantastic. Wow, I thought it was Spider Man was your uh, your your weak spot, but now we've no, made, found no, your no, Spi it. it's Hawkeye. Spider Man is Spider Man is, but Hawkeye well, is the most relatable. Bug. But I'm joking. I love Spider Man. <laughs> but Hawkeye <laughs> is the most relatable because he's it's the year anniversary i'm determined kind of, to make know. it split up apparently that's why <laughs> do you remember the rowan atkinson skit the spider plant man yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was what show was that from oh was that um was that a comic relief one it was something like that was it comic relief yeah it was he's done a lot of like, comic yeah. relief yeah he's got it a was new around... movie coming out on netflix has he it's all about him trying to get rid of a bee it's like a proper slap oh, yes. thing. Oh, yeah. It's just all yeah. about him getting, trying to get yeah. a bee out of a house. He's house sitting. <laughs> like... I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen it advertised. That looks really cool. Um, right. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on to what else is going on. Uh, Jurassic oh, World. Oh. What? Oh, okay. You want to carry on? You want to carry we're on? Not, we're not talking about the end credit scene that most people Ooh. missed. Oh, actually, that's quite a nice um, yeah, uh, transition I'll be honest, from I watched Spider Man. It, and I absolutely, it meant zero to me. I didn't get it. The DDDC, oh. the Department of Damage Control. Oh, which we have right, previously okay. seen in <clears throat> Iron Man. Right. Every right, right back to Iron Man. They cleaned up yeah. the Iron Monger mess. They're, yeah, they've I mean, been around. To be for fair, a long time. if this was Star Wars, you know, I would have quoted six different scriptures. This kind of like 
this kind of almost arcs back to Agents of Shield because you kind of touch on it in Agents of Shield as well, like the people that come in after after the Avengers have done their thing. And these people have to clean yeah. up basically and make things go away. There's um there's some good comic book runs as well that, that mm. circle around them. And if I'm right, there's actually a new comic book run starting soon as well. well I'm sure was I read to that be somewhere. A comedy series at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was Clean Up Crew mm. or something like that, or I can't remember what it's called. Something like that. <laughs> I think it had a pilot, didn't it? Okay. Yeah, it obviously didn't go very well. <laughs> but it's yeah, but those those characters, it's it's curious to see where they're gonna go with like how they're tied into it. Because well, to have a, a mid credit scene already mm. on the first Cause, episode. Yeah, because they're kind of they're they're a subsidiary of SHIELD, aren't they? But they're also working for the federal government. So it it could be they could go either way, really, couldn't they? It could be either they wanna stop Camilla Khan from using those powers, or mm. they or they want to use her as a part of the Avengers initiative and they introduce it to other people. I That's... think it's going to be through the bracelet. I think yeah, oh, yeah. Jackson. No, the, yeah, the artifact. <laughs> but I think they're bringing a young team together. They they allude to the fact that um, it came from her grandma, didn't they? That was yeah. That was the kind of hint. It was grandma's like junk, as they called it. So there's there's clearly going to be something there that they need to explore and why she had this thing that, that had cosmic powers. And I think that will probably be the tie into... Nana wasn't human. Ooh. But I think that'll be the tie into Captain Marvel. I think ooh. Captain Marvel will be tied to the bracelet somehow yeah. and come through Kamala Khan that way. Uh, but I think Damage Control is going to be tied in with it that way. But they're going to be aware of the artifact and then all of a sudden... It's resurfaced. That's 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 my guess. That's my guess. Yeah. Uh, but does it mean we're going to get a mid-credit scene on every episode, or is that just? I didn't even realize there was one. I was just really enjoying the credits. <laughs> yeah. And then and so I, mean, when it, when it, I actually started getting up to go to the thing. I was like, oh, okay, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I um, understand it. <laughs> I only was watching the credits because I wanted mm. to double check that there was somebody in it that I thought was in it. Um, and was reading the credits, and then that came up. I was like, oh, glad I stuck around. So glad who was it around. you thought was in it? You know, I already spoke to you about it. I don't know, I lose track. There's so many... Oh, oh the ring out, the, uh, the the announcer. Mr. Ryan oh, Benargos. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's Ryan Benargos, one of yep. our previous guests um, from Geek Week episode... <laughs> I don't even remember now. 30-something. Um, Phantom Menace, yeah. Yeah. But he, uh, yeah, he was in, it. He, in he, our episodes. He, oh, that could be a thing. But yeah, he was the uh, the con announcer. Um, and then after the episode aired, he done a post about on Instagram as well, which was quite cool. Um, but yeah, Agent M, as in this week in Marvel podcast, previous guest on the Geek Week interview. Um, but yeah, it was uh, <laughs> he was it, now we've now officially interviewed a, an MCU player, which is cool. Um, next up, Hollywood. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> we can um, review the movie. It's uh, <laughs> that would be a rubbish oh, movie. Let's go. <laughs> um, but so yeah, so let's move on. So I was saying there, Jurassic World, Jurassic World Dominion um, has hit theaters and has not been received very well. I have seen you. it. In have you actually dimensions. seen it today? I actually saw it today in three D. Go on then. Um, no, no spoiler review. Let's do it. Uh, it was rubbish. Okay, it was no rubbish. It's, it's taking you okay. that long. It was rubbish. I know you. No, I was trying to think. No, I just don't want to spoil it because you know you said no spoiler. So, um, dinosaurs uh, wasn't as good. There's uh, uh, dinosaurs, uh, if you will, and uh, there's uh, chaos. Uh, so much chaos, and uh, uh, they they pack it up, and uh, they had some good parts, and they had some bad parts, and uh, 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 and then they they put them together, and that's what happened. So it's rubbish. No, it's um. <laughs> I actually don't think it's rubbish. It is not. It's not great. All right, let me. No, wait, 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 let me okay. Answer, if, if I was going, answer 10, this way. Oh no, on. answer this way. Jurassic Park one, Jurassic Park two, or Jurassic Park three. Oh. Two. See, okay. It wasn't. It wasn't a bucket of T Rex piss bad then. It was just baby T Rex broken leg bad. It was just Vince Vaughn. It was Vince Vaughn acting bad. It wasn't. It wasn't Eric bad. It was. 
the, the things I, I, I'm not going to lie, I enjoy all the Jurassic Park films, so I'm. Oh, I do as well. I am terribly oh, I guilty of that. It, I just it like dinosaurs. As- is it as bad as when she kicked the Velociraptor in the face doing the little loopy loop? Is it as bad as no, that? No, when she when she calls the Velociraptor and goes, "Hey you," and the Black Velociraptor's like, "Err." Um, <laughs> that's then probably she does the a bit. gymnast. Yeah. Gymnastics. Um, so, out of ten, I would probably give it a five or a six because the thing is, there's some really good set pieces in it, which I you know when you and I got really into. There was a couple of jump scare moments that genuinely made me jump. I love the, the 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 visuals, like the special effects, are absolutely insane and are really good. The story isn't great, but the problem is, is because again, it feels like one of those things where, you know, like when Rise of Skywalker happened, and it was like it felt like it was more than one film in a film because they didn't like the last one they did, and they've tried to put like two films into one film to try and make up for the other one, just to make yeah, it right. just to make it three films rather than if you've got an idea for four films, make four. Don't yeah. and weird thing about everyone's fixated on trilogies, but trilogies is just a number someone just made up one day. You know, like it was just a thing someone made up one day. So just do the story because it, it felt like they had two stories that they sort of tried to put into one. And actually, it's not. This isn't a spoiler, but it's not actually a film about how we coexist with dinosaurs. That's that. That was the biggest surprise and probably the biggest misdirection of the trailer and all the build-up material. And I think that's where a lot of people are just like, what? A bit like how. Fallen Kingdom was billed as, you know, escaping Fireball Dino Island, but actually was only a quarter of that, and it was 75% in a mansion. This is probably about a quarter, well, not even that, probably a fifth living with dinosaurs, four fifths, uh, you know, another... Something else. Yeah, you know what, I, didn't, I, I actually kind of didn't think it was going to be that, because let's be honest, if the world was overrun with dinosaurs, the film wouldn't last very long. <laughs> let's be fair, like, that scene of him going through, I don't know, well, is it Italy Jimmy's or... he's gone to the park. Rome or Hopefully something. he'll come back. Yeah, it's um, like, oh, I'm just popping to our stuff. Is it, is it necessary? <laughs> do, do you need this? Yeah, I just want to have a little browse. No, no, no. Sit down. Like, do you need I your just, dino parking validated? Yes, sir. But the, the scene of them in Italy or Rome or wherever it is, uh, you know, and he's on the, uh, the, the motorbike mm. and there's like two... Carnotauruses or something. There's Velociraptors jumping around. I was just thinking, like that. That if you think back historically through all the films, a scene like that, people would not last long. It, you're you're talking minutes. So it couldn't be a film that was all just that. There had to be more to it. So um, I'm, I'm excited reckon, for it. But... Do you go and watch it because I think there's a lot more merit to it than what people are saying. The problem is as well. I do think people go into films now trying to find things to hate. Like people go in to go and find the thing that makes them most popular to talk about that, you know, they can go, oh, well, this was terrible because of this and be the first one on the internet to say like, oh, it, this is why it did not work. Or this is the way it failed. And this mm. was, you know, no one, people rarely go into something now and go like, you know, there were bits that didn't work, but here's the bits that did work. People just always want to focus on negative. Like I said, yeah. and I know that it's, you know, constructive criticism is absolutely a must. You know, like I said, it is not a great film. It is a, but I do think there's a lot of good parts in it. It's actually is enough for me to go. I will watch that again, and I will have the Blu-ray, and I will put it on again. And you know, the other thing is, when I was in the cinema, there were, um, you know, it was quite a busy one because we saw it in 3D, which was really cool seeing in 3D with the, especially with the dinosaurs. And um, but there was there was a lot of kids in there, and but there was kids with their parents who had obviously gone to see Jurassic Park and then seen this. But hearing the kids with certain like, bits happen, and hearing the kids go, whoa, and ew, and stuff like that. I know it sounds stupid, but... <laughs> oh, you know so I mean? uh... Yeah, a little bit, but like, it was... Did like, you see this in the 90s? <laughs> right, I didn't say... Tubular, right. dude! Yeah. <laughs> I said what? I said Are you sure what? You I went like, sat... came on said radical and passed me the umbongo. You know, come on. Are you, Are you sure you weren't sat behind the turtles? <laughs> <laughs> no. I said Whoa. <laughs> God, honestly, you're working out like I've just come out with like fucking power and act. Yeah, the way you something. said it, whoa, and whoa, but, uh, like whoa. Because that's like, how the kids say it. The like that's because they're the... all wearing trench coats and hats. <laughs> oh God! And Do you know what? Pizza. Year anniversary, whoa. right? Quits. That's the end. Radical. <laughs> It's either that or it's or it's it's uh, what's the crush from uh, Nemo. How old are you, dude? Two hundred and fifty, dude. <laughs> I'm still young, little dude. Um, no, right. but 
in all fairness, I, I, I probably... didn't. I didn't go to the cinema with Paulie Shaw. Um, I went with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> Oh god, Dash is getting a prop, that's dangerous. Oh no, I just probably, doing the blinds, that's safe. Listen, I probably will go and see it, or I will get it on Prime or something like that so that I can sit at home and watch it with all of my kids because you know not all of them would be allowed to go and watch it in the cinema. But uh, it's yeah. twelve unless you're accompanied by an adult. There were kids in there that were like six. I'd like to be joking. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm talking I thought three was too, or four like. you know, and I thought that was too young actually, some of it. Some of them I did think they were kids were a bit I was just thinking like that people getting eaten and quite can, can we just remember that the first film was a PG and people get munched on the, the opening scene is shooter I'm still traumatized to this day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. I just hope that I hope it's I, I just hoped that it wouldn't have been a Jurassic Park 3. And not because I didn't enjoy Jurassic Park 3. I really enjoyed the original kind of trilogy. I, I liked it as a as a kind of a full circle kind of trilogy. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm, I'm not going I'm, to I'm not gonna hate it because it's Jurassic Park or Jurassic yeah. World or whatever you want to call it. I can't and you hate get it. to it's... see a lot more species of dinosaurs that you've never seen before. And that is always awesome. But honestly, I could they could bring back the talking raptor of Jurassic Park three and oh, have on. have have Owen ride a triceratops into the sunset and I would still go Oh you have seen um I would still think it was cool. Like it's because that's what Jurassic Park was for me. When when I was younger and it came out, it was just really cool. Let's be honest. Yes. It was it was dinosaurs on the screen in a way that we had never seen it before. And for those of the, oh, those of us that have grown up loving dinosaurs and knowing hundreds of them or whatever, like, you know, pre Jurassic Park, let's be perfectly honest with you, dinosaurs and dinosaurs in books and stuff like that were either really cartoony or they were the kind of old school kind of art painting and stuff like that. Do you know or what I mean? Stop motion sort of technology. Or there was nothing that looked scene, yeah. like it was really there. No. And Jurassic Park was looked like real and it still holds yeah. up. It still oh, holds massively, up. Massively. It's you know, and I think a lot can be said when but even just this Christmas, my son got the big Brachiosaurus figure that you could get. Yeah. Awesome. He yeah. got that and there was part of me that was jealous. I was like, oh, that's that's Jurassic Park one Brachiosaurus. So I just I want to kind of clearance at Argos still. I'm yeah, like, they have they've gone I'm on tempted. clearance now. It's a really cool it, it's a big piece, but I was just kind of like, I just want to put it on two legs eating from a tree and just kind of go, <laughs> you know, take my glasses off, like turn someone's head to look at it, you know. But it's yeah, that's Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, let's be honest, it's just really cool. It's just really good fun, and let's not get too deep. I think they tried a little bit too hard in the last one to make it really deep and yeah, layered and, and do, stuff. That's probably the bits where it falls down, I guess, a little bit in this one. But like, yeah. like I said, I don't think it's a bad... For, everyone's sitting there going like, oh, it's the terrible film. But I think the problem is, if things aren't a masterpiece, people want to hate stuff now. Like, is there any a masterpiece, it's done. Is there any part of it that kind of there's a real surprise that you weren't expecting? Like, yeah, there was a couple of bits actually. I genuinely wasn't expecting a lot of the actual main story is not even hinted at in the trailers, like at all. Cool, that's cool. Like, that's, that's cool. The thing. Then. I genuinely was surprised by a couple of things. Um, but like I said, the actual main story that 90% of it is not actually what is shown in the trailer. Like right. if by watching and, all the trailers and I watched all of them, you would never have guessed what the actual what actually happens in this film. And if we look at it as a timeline as well, because they've said that this is the final, this is the concluding part, this is it, this is where we're going to end. As a film, we had a Jurassic Park theme park, a, a, a dinosaur theme park. We then had the island where they were grown, and we had to go and rescue the dinosaurs from there because there was hunters and stuff like that. We then had people catching them and, and taking them off and doing different bits with them and stuff. We then had that turn into a, a theme park like years later, and they were genetically mixing the dinosaurs. They then had them selling those dinosaurs at auction and genetically modifying them even more. And then in this one, leading into this one, they had the dinosaurs kind of escape into the real world. There's not really anywhere else they can take it. They've literally taken it to the end. So I don't know who was going into this expecting some kind of 
Are you laughing Massive. because they go off into space or something? No. Um, no Vin Diesel comes in on a Velociraptor and just says, family. Um, the first, the first <laughs> Velociraptor into space. But, but do you know what I mean? It's like, so in my, in my mind, I'm kind of like, it, I, I've seen it from the beginning. We've watched it from the kind of contained beginning and it's evolved and evolved Ooh. and evolved. And we're kind of at the end here. So it's... I'm scared by how close you were to an abandoned concept they had for like three, for Jurassic Park three. Oh, I know. There was actually a concept of human dino hybrids, like for the military. Oh, God. And it's got quite far. There's concept art and stuff like that. Yeah. It's got quite far. So when people go like, oh, it's gone too far, you go, no, no. I've seen where it could have gone too far. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. It, it, it stayed in the country. It was going very far out. <laughs> that's my that was my fear. Is I was like, I hope they don't kind of revisit that idea of like you know blue and Owen <sighs> run off into the sunset and then we see like a little hybrid. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I didn't want it no, to go so far that it was kind of. It like, this does is finish it. The story it finishes that the the it finishes the story of these characters that this is this whole bit is done now. Good, good. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. It's so hard I'm not to spoil it because I want to talk about it. Specifics, but I can't. Yeah, we will. We'll I'll watch can't. it. Um, so the only he's other not... thing as well, go on. Sorry. I'll see. He's not telling us about the secret Doctor Who ending. No. He's hiding the Doctor Who ending. <laughs> he's called Doctor Who, isn't he? I'm not. I'm. I'm not being overly racist there. I'm, yeah, no, Doctor Doctor Wu. Wu. yeah, thank God yeah. for that. Wow. I said, yeah. I said it on a recording. I thought, oh God, I hope that's right now. Wow. His <laughs> name yeah. is Keith. Right? <laughs> and you are going to be cancelled. No, it is Doctor Who, and he's the Who only one that's featured in all of them, isn't it? Yeah, Henry Wu. Uh, he, he was is. in number three. No, no. Oh, there you go. He's, no. he's been number one. to be in number three. They were re- rewriting <laughs> it as they were doing it. H. Macy's character changed three times. They were actually meant to be rich adventurers at one point, and then they changed them <laughs> to like weird dad, and then they just kept changing it. Mid, it was just a mess. I... It's an interesting read, though. I would love for someone to get the rights for it from the book, from Michael Christian's original book and create yeah. it as a faithful adaptation of the book. Not aim it at children and be a family room dinosaur movie, but how it was originally written. Yeah, because yeah. those Adam dies in are, the first book. Like, those books they, are dark. Yeah, I really enjoyed the um, the first one. And I only read it for the first time in um, I think during lockdown. I was like, I have never got around to reading it, so I was like, actually, now now it's going to be my time. And it's dark, and there's loads of really cool bits and like really good set pieces that would. Be I think awesome that's the, the potential. The that's the potential moving that's, forward. Is someone will revisit it and redo the original. The only, I think that's the only way they could go now. Is to top to top yeah. the franchise would be to go back, get the original manuscript, and do it again, but darker, more serious, yeah. and mature. Because those kids that are growing up with Jurassic Park now, <laughs> like us, we're already grown adults. The kids that are growing up with these Jurassic World movies will be old enough then to appreciate the proper story and revisit yeah. the original style of like Jurassic Park. That's the only way <laughs> to really progress it now. And speaking of kids, there's the, you know, for any big Jurassic Park fans, Jurassic World fans, you still have got one series of Camp Cretaceous to go and where yeah. they're going to take that. And that I is really just, like that show. That's just robotic dog human things, whatever. Um, it got right. really silly, didn't it? It did get a bit silly. The first couple of seasons were good. Now it's like, oh, let's go for this special portal door. And we're now in a snowy world. And um, yeah, okay. Um, so the only other thing I suppose that's kind of surfacing is there's a lot of TV spots for Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder has got a lot of TV spots at the moment. And they kind of drip feed in different bits of the film. And you're seeing different characters and stuff like that. Um, and considering the film was supposed to have already been out by now, they pushed it back by a month, didn't they? So we still got to the beginning of July to, to wait, but it was supposed to come out at the beginning of June, end of May, beginning of June. Um, I'm really psyched for it. I cannot wait for this film. I think this is going to exceed all expectations. And it's just going to be a long wait for me to see it because I go away to Greece on the 3rd of July. Oh, man. When is it out? Oh, dear. <laughs> the 8th, I think it is, 8th of July. Yeah, so... But to be fair, there's not going to be too many spoilers in the middle of a Greek island, so I think I should be all right. <laughs> Mate, Zeus, Zeus is in it, so they might go hard on it. So there's, you know, they touch on Greek mythology in this one, don't they? So Yeah, but it's Russell Crowe, so they might go like... Eh, supposedly, like, though, <laughs> supposedly, he's really... Fighting around the world. <laughs> it, supposedly, he's done good on it. He's done good no, on I think it. He did. I actually um, really rate Russell Crowe. I think he's a great actor. <clears throat> so... Let's let's move on. Let's let's talk with the Geek Week in review. Let's let's kind of 
let's talk a little bit about us because we've talked about everything that's happened this week. Um, so we've got a couple of segments from people. Um, it's been a good run though. 52 weeks. 52 weeks is a long time. Like it's yeah, longer really than. Me. It sound like we were ending then. It's been a good run, lads. So, you know, <laughs> it's been a good run. <laughs> Jake's um, turning all the lights off, pulling the plugs. It's been a good one, I just, lads. I wanted to get um, your live reaction that we are yeah. now officially done. No, um, oh. I'm already joking. I'm already joking. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a fun, though. It's been a, a fun year. It's scary to think that we've been doing this for a year. but It doesn't just... feel like a year. No, it doesn't. And I think that it, it just goes like to show... Me. Well, it's not your part-time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, what episode did you join us? Was it 12 or 13? Uh, uh, it was, yeah, it was 12 or 13. Uh, 11, came 12 on or 13. as a guest. Came on as a I guest came on as a guest, and then I was a guest the second week, and then after that, I was just there. <laughs> just there. Just we just we included, you in, included you in the intro. And Before that was it, I like... brought the fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if you remember, for a while, we just kept referring him to as the guy who didn't re- who refuses to hang up the uh, the, the Zoom call. We, <laughs> the we announced who's... him as that several times, like, and he's been on the on the line ever since last week. It's Ryan. He's back again. <laughs> That's how. You, if anyone's listening, wondering how you get a regular spot on a show, just don't hang up. That's just it. Don't, don't go don't home. Don't don't leave, and then you're there already when they start again. Well, as part of the uh, year celebrations, we are going to go on to a a new channel, a new call. So. Ryan, it's been fun. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll <see. laughs> um, no, but we enjoy weeks, we I enjoy think... having you around, Ryan. But uh, sadly, Vic was much more entertaining. So uh... was, uh... <laughs> I am Ryan, speaker of geeks, and you will not ditch me. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't. It's a good trio. It works really nicely. Um, but I think what does... why is he doing his knuckles? That's threatening. Oh, <laughs> It's been a good week. We'll get Vic and he's sitting there like. <laughs> sorry, I didn't put two and two together. Sorry, I'm cracking it up. But I think it does Jesus. speak. If anyone's volumes. listening, send help. Send help. <laughs> I think Danger it speaks Danger. volumes for the um for the content that we've got. That literally in this last year, the amount of content that we've had, we've had stuff to talk about, like in abundance each week, and we haven't mm. even touched. We've really talked Marvel, Star Wars, toys, films, TV, Disney Plus, like. You know, we are. So I must say, we yeah. are kind of, we are kind of the Disney Plus slash Hasbro talking point. Oh, we? we do. <laughs> we stick to those core subjects mainly. Every now and again, I take us off on a random tangent. That seems to be my special <laughs> skill. Is that? But you know I'll what? Though, we, but we didn't start like that. That's the funny no, thing. We, is we did not start like that. We really did talk about so much. But <clears> I think there's so much coming out from those avenues now that. To, to talk about everything would just be too long of a show. Um, we've had a whole bunch of guests. We've had loads of guests as well in this year, which has been really cool. Um, and it's definitely saying to, um, we're hoping to carry on moving forward with, with new people. We've got kind of a, a, a semi list of people that are going to come on within the next year, a lot of shows. Um, I don't want to say if you've got a favourite, because that really <laughs> puts people on the spot. But I've really enjoyed the majority of our guests. Um, so can, we I, blue, can, we have, can we have a blooper real episode at some point where we have the uh, reactions of when, when like random people hung up on us and things like that? We'll just see our reactions go, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> and just for clarification, not when they hung up, hung up, but like kind of it's, yeah. it's <laughs> but a, apologies to Mad Dame when we ran out of time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we've got three of our guests, three of our previous guests have cut segments for us. So we, we've chatted to them um, and they've done segments for us. So I think we need to cut to the first one. Um, the first one naturally is is last week's guest host who did replace Ryan, um, and it's Vic. The girl strikes back, uh, and we asked her for a top five. So let's cut to that and have a look at her top five. Hello, everyone. It's the girl strikes back. Uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations to the Geek in Week review. Uh, you guys been doing it for a year now. That is crazy. So happy anniversary. It is amazing. Uh, so you guys asked me to do uh, the top five of my favorite something. So I was like, you know what? It's gonna be Grogu's. Like, I think you all know how much I love Grogu's. So here's my top five. Uh, on the fifth place is gonna be the Black Series Leo Grogu here. It comes with the little froggies and the little ball and everything is so cute. So that's my fifth 
favorite. On the fourth place, it is the retro collection of Grogu here. Comes with the little pod and everything. I love it. It's really cute and I love the card as well. On the third place, it is the Christmas edition. Little Grogu here in the little Santa outfit. I love it. It's so cute. It's adorable. And on the second place, it's gotta be, it's gotta be the deluxe Mandalorian hot toy. Grogu here. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. It looks even better in real life. Um, this one comes with the deluxe uh, Din Djarin, um hot toys and it comes with two different uh, Grogu's here. One in the pod and one standing with the Leon necklace. I love it. It is very very cute. So that's on my second place and on the first place it is gonna be my customized Darth Grogu here. So it took me around two uh, days to make him. I love him. He is adorably scary. Um, yeah, I made it from the Mattel uh, Leo Grogu. Um, I love it. I love it. He looks really cute and really scary at the same time. So yeah, I love Darth Maul anyway. And I was like, I want to make, I want to make a Leo Maul. Grogu here. So yeah, so here is my top five and thank you so much for having me. And guys, congratulations again. Bye! Yeah, it only feels like last week that you spoke to her because it was. So <laughs> I mean, it's good, but yeah. I mean, it's not like third host good, but you know, whatever. <laughs> cool. She's it's good. Fine. Let's, let's be honest. For anyone that if I was going to be replaced, I'd be happy to be replaced by her, to be fair. Because she for anyone me, that I love is... her channel. It's good. Yes, it. For anyone that's a fan of, of, of Vic or, you know, The Girl Strikes Back, as she's better known online, um, do go and check her channels out. She is very awesome. And she will 100% be back on um, a show at some point soon because we really well, do going, enjoy it. going on holiday for two weeks, so, you know, you're apparently so fond of replacing <laughs> oh, me. Just get on then. Ryan, look, you've just given it away, mate. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't <laughs> give it away. <laughs> um, all right, let me test your knowledge, then. Let me test your knowledge. So, oh, God. Geek Week in Review has been going a, it, it's actually technically a year on the um, 14th. So that was the, the first air date. Um, do you know what we called the show? The very first episode. The very first episode? Yeah. <laughs> the Week in Review According to Geeks? No, very know. close though. Very close. Originally, for the first four episodes of our show, oh, it, was God, called, it, called? it was just called, the, it was called Week in Review. Oh, wow. Yeah. For the first four episodes, it was called Week in Review, and then we changed at some point to Geek Week in Review. But yeah, originally it was called Week in Review, um, which I didn't even realise. I know. <laughs> but, completely, completely no, forgot. Yeah, totally forgot. Um, <clears throat> do you know, now we did talk about everything back in, in the original ones, and it was quite, it's quite creepy <laughs> actually looking back at it, because it will be. me and, me and, uh, sorry, we had spoken like you know through messages and texts and stuff like that, but I think that was the first call that we had ever actually been oh, yeah, on and ever. face to face. Like we had spoken quite a lot through the groups and stuff, but yeah, I think it was the first time we saw each other, yeah. But um, I don't think you would get that from the show, but watching it yeah. back, I'm kind of like, oh, look, it's like a first date, like it's, look, at, <laughs> look how awkward they both are, they're just they're laughing at each other's jokes and stuff. Um, but yeah, the week in review was the first one. Um, do you know what the first figure, the first figure that we mentioned on the first show? And I was surprised by this. So we looked at, we, we and back then, the editing as well, we were putting the pictures of the figures up. I uh, cannot be bothered with that now because oh, it's wow. too much. Yeah, it's too much faff. But, um, but yeah, there was there was one that we went through basically all of the figures that were, were released or, or, or talked about that week. Um, and there was one that came been, up first. Would it have been a DC figure? No, no, we didn't, talk about, we didn't talk about DC till about four or five weeks in. No, it was Marvel. I tell you that it was a Marvel oh. figure, an X Men character. No, it was, was it was the retro Sandman figure. It was the first <laughs> figure that we mentioned on Week in Review, as it was known back then. <laughs> um, yeah, um, first show that we spoke about. Um, first show we spoke about would have been 
Mandalorian? Before, before Bad Batch. Uh, would it have been, man, would it have been no, before Mandalorian? No, 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 it's Bad Batch. Was it Bad Batch? Okay. Bad Batch, yeah. yeah. But I don't know if it was... I, I didn't watch in depth the episode, but we talked about Bad Batch. It was Bad Batch Loki time that we, we started. <laughs> that makes sense, because um, actually, I, I was when I joined, we were talking about Bad Batch, and we were quite a few episodes into it by then. And then I had to start making sure I watched things before Sunday when we film. <laughs> ever. I've, that's the thing. I've now... Had a watching schedule because of the show. I've now I think I've yeah. definitely got to watch before we get on Sunday. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'll be like, Ryan, what are you doing tonight? I can't go away. I've got to watch something for Sunday <laughs> <laughs> when we film. Um, and even though this is week fifty-two, this isn't our fifty-second show because we did do a couple of specials as well. Yeah. Um, do you remember what they were? Doctor Strange. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You did a Spider-Man one. Yeah. Was there another I one? No. I think that was it. I think it was just those two specials, wasn't it? Yeah. Spider-Man, Doctor Strange. Spider-Man, oh, Doctor Strange. Did we do a Avengers one? No. No. Oh, my God. That's going back. That was actually <coughs> mine and Jake's old channel from many, yeah. many, many years ago. That was when we, we filmed when in we the car. To, we attempted to video, but we didn't actually put them out anywhere. We just kind of, no. you know, when you, you know, when you used to do like radio shows on your Walkman back in the day. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so it was the two specials for those. They were those. Um, so we have had multiple guests on. Um, I've already mentioned Vic. What other guests have we had more than once? More than once? Um, X, Parvex. Parvex, yeah, Paul from Parvex. So it's only Vic, um, Paravex, Paul. Um, Paul from Paravex, Vim. Uh, Par- My yeah, new musical buddy. Um, you, they're, they're Do you remember that we've had twice? Do you remember who our first guest was? Yes. David Displays Model Behaviour. Yeah, David. Yeah. And that was episode three? Something like that. Into the set. See, like, you but I remember him being the it. first. I yeah. remember him being the first, and I think Nerd Zoic was the second, if I Nerd remember Zoic right. Nerd Zoic was the second, yeah. Because yeah. those, yeah. those two guys I was speaking with at the time, I'd just come off doing the podcast with Dave. So I was doing a podcast the day before I started the one with you, and the one with me and Dave just wasn't going well. The guys couldn't, we could, could not commit to a time each week, and it just dropped off terribly. Yeah. Um, but Paul, being the, uh, the the only other guest that we've had more than once, um, mm. naturally we had to ask him to do a segment as well. So he uh, he recorded a segment with us the last time he um, he was on the show. So let's jump to that one, and we asked him for um, his top something and naturally it was his top x i think he called it his top x purchases of the year <laughs> like, of the last 12 months so let's jump over to that one cool. hello paul from power of x men how you doing today right i'm doing great i'm so glad to be back on good 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 i know i think you may be the guest that's featured on our show the most this is the really? third appearance now yeah it's my third um, yeah, it's my so- one more stamp on your loyalty card and you get a prize <laughs> wait what do i get do i get my own song written about me by you right yes. <laughs> we could do that six do seven that. eight no don't you guys go down there again um paul thank you ever so much <laughs> thank you ever so much for joining us here on our one year anniversary this is our year show week 52 the anniversary madness madness, oh, madness. thank you so with all of our guests we're doing um a quick top five top ten um and naturally it only makes sense for, to get like top five x collectibles from you so uh, the, the show's a year old, 12 months uh, as of today. So your top five X collectibles of the last 12 months. Let's do it. Let's see it. All right. Take it I away, Paul. Up. I'll take it away right here. All right. So my number five is going to be the Excalibur Marvel Legends box set. Nice. Listen, we, we're, we're eagerly anticipating Rachel, but we love the Excalibur team so much. We have Fran Drescher, Kitty Pride right there. We have another Captain Britain, which I think lands well with you guys over there. <laughs> well, and maybe. Then, well, then we have Megan as well. And I think this is such a great box set. It's a must have for all of the X stands out there. I yep. love the packaging with the cards there. That to me is just absolutely beautiful. Do you guys have it? Yep. Yes. Yep. No. I've got that one. I got yeah. that one. The big seller, the big sell for me was Megan, to be perfectly honest with you. Having Captain Britain and Megan in that box set together, being the you know, boyfriend, no, husband, wife, weren't they? Oh, yeah, the end of yeah it. baby number um, two along the way. 
that was just a real sort of deep dive into X kind of fandom and stuff. So yeah, I was I was pleased with that. Um, little known fact as well. Did you know that Captain Britain comes originally from a town called Molden, which no. is very close to where me and Ryan live. So wait, that means Betsy Braddock is also from there. Oh yeah, it must be. I'm going to have to check that. I know that because they're is. twins. Oh, of course. So they, yeah, they have to have been born there. They had to have been born there together. So yeah. Multiverse. Yeah. I'll, Multiverse right there. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, I, I could I could get in my car and I could be there in literally 15 minutes. That's so, insane. No, 20 minutes because you swing by pick me up first. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm literally Number four. so excited. Number four is going to be the Hellfire Gala hardcover. Oh. Have you guys read the Hellfire Gala? No. I, I want no. to. It's, oh, so I they show to. all of the looks right there. It's a wonderful hardcover. There's a variant edition with the Russell Dodderman on the green carpet looks, but look at that stud right there. Look at Colossus. Wow. wow. It's, a, it's a huge story. I, I'm debating if I should spoil it for you guys because it's kind of like, it's an old story at this point, but you know it, it culminates with a murder at the Hellfire Gala. A very famous character who's really big in the MCU right now dies. But they also include the previous Hellfire Gala issue from X-Men Classic. So it's just such a wonderful, let me see if I can get it. Like, it's such a wonderful, yeah, right there. It's such a wonderful, wonderful nice. collection. Hardcover. Yeah. This is a non-bearing edition. But I think if you're an x stand, you you need to have this. And it just came out a couple of months ago. Yeah, I, I do need to read it. I just, uh, I'm loving, all, I love the costumes and I see people like yourself like, post all these costumes and they just, some of them are just stunning. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, the Russell Dodderman get... designs are absolutely wonderful, except for Jean Grey. Jean Grey looks absolutely terrible every year at the Hellfire Gala. There's a new <laughs> one coming and I was just like, that's her outfit. She looks like she went shopping at Rampage in like 1999, <laughs> but. There's, there's always, there's always a celebrity at a gala though, where they're year on year, their, their outfit choice is questionable. And Jean's questionable. unfortunate, just that one. Joan <laughs> Rivers is there commenting on it. That's right. Cause Joan Rivers <laughs> in the multiverse is actually a mutant and they resurrected yeah. her on Krakoa. <laughs> yeah, just for that guy. I love her outfit. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> Three. Number, right. three. Yeah, three. Number three. three. <laughs> number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. All right. Number three. Another hardcover. It's got to be the Hickman Inferno mm. hardcover mm. right here. It's a huge story. What happens in Hoxpox comes into fruition here. Um, you guys know the general premise, right? Destiny. Mm -hmm. general is, premise. Yeah. <laughs> Destiny is resurrected and they're going to unleash Inferno on Krakoa. Now, there's no actual Inferno, I want to say, but it's more like of a spiritual Inferno, and a lot happens in it. So a lot of questions that you have in Hoxpox get answered here. I don't think Hickman is for sure gone, but this is supposed to be the end of the Hickman story right here. And Moira is right there, dead center, and it's a wonderful, wonderful story. The art's wonderful, the pacing's good, and it's a must-have. I mean, it's part of like the big canon right now and they re re uh imagined that cover as well didn't they with uh x-men 92 x -Men, uh, 92 wasn't or, it yeah, yeah with, with jubilee, jubilee in and moira's it. place yeah mm. it's really interesting yeah they're doing something a little different but they're homaging everything that hickman did and it's and it's a lot of fun that's cool that's cool uh number two number two is the Mafex Psylocke. Speaking of Betsy Braddock, right there. I just feel this figure looks so wonderful. She looks like she's out of the X-Men Apocalypse Super Nintendo mm. game with like the lavender <laughs> yeah. hair there. Um, I love the accessories here. Ooh, her hand just came off right there. Oh I my think, God. oh my God. <laughs> she is a wonderful figure. I've become obsessed with Mafexes. The as of this recording, the Mafex Jean Grey is supposed to be dropping soon. It was due in March. It still hasn't come out yet. But I think the entire Mafex line is so much fun. I love these figures quite a bit. She is cool. That is a nice looking figure. I love the metallic look on her as well. Do you guys collect the Mafex? Nope. The nope. price point is a little high there, but I think they're worth it. I have all the available ones up there. And it's just one of my favorite figures. I think if you're an X stan, ah, uh, you know, it, it is kind of a must because Cyclops and Wolverine and Gambit look really great. And we have Storm and Magneto also coming. 
but um, the price point is is quite a bit. So, and I try to reach out to Mayfex to get them on my show and just be like, hey, can we talk about your like process for this? I got the really weirdest email where they're like, thank you for your inquiry. We cannot do press. And that's it. <laughs> I was so angry. Just, wow. Just uh, thank you very much. No. No. <laughs> just, <laughs> but I'm glad they replied. Talk about it. Nine. Um, <laughs> so I actually went to, so when I wrote the request, I went, I typed in what I wanted to do and I went to Google and I copy and pasted it into translate so I can get it in Japanese. So I sent the email in English and Japanese, and I'm sure it was like all over the place, but I, I was very happy. They responded. Just insulted nice. one of their mothers in the translation by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're reading it going, they're reading it going, and my mother is a hippo. What? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I thought about that too, that I probably said something like atrocious to them that I didn't mean, but yes. If Anyways, you're watching, forgive him. Number one. Number one, I'm really excited for this one. I'm sorry, Ryan, this is a trigger warning for you. It has mm -hmm. to be the Sentinel that came out in August, right there. I got it in September, so it still counts for the one-year marker. Listen, it's gorgeous. I have him displayed right there oh. with, with my Joe Casada Gambit and Rogue, but it is. I, I just think it's a must-have for your collection. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you're an X fan, you need the Sentinel. It's pricey on the secondary market, but I don't know. I would give up one of my kidneys for it. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's just so beautiful. It's so well done. And and yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. I'm like speechless it's, about it. It is an amazing piece of um, figure. Like it, it really is. There's, I'm glad that's your number one. I'd have been upset if it wasn't, to be fair. I just, something about knee joints yeah. or, or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shout out to the Foosh for that little hack, Robo, for, for showing us how to like rectify that. Yeah, my knee joints were like really wobbly. I saw it on Walmart.com. Oh, my God. For like a thousand dollars. I was like, wow. wow, that's so much money. Like, and it's only going to go up in value as like the legends continue going up. But, you know, thinking <laughs> about the last 12 months, top five, like X-Men collectibles you need to have. I, how can you not put the Sentinel on there? I mean, it, no. it is what it is. It's, it is an yeah. incredible, incredible piece of kit. Um, interestingly, though, I've seen over here on the uh, on the secondhand market, it's not it's not really shut up in price like people have tried they've put it out and sort of i don't know about kind of auction sites and stuff like that but more on the groups and that people have put it out at kind of oh yeah 900 pounds and people have kind of left it and then it's dropped down to only a little bit over what retail was so oh, they are they are there to be had but i think you're right i think it's one of the things that is just going to soar in value as the years kind of tick on because we're not going to get it again you know it's not we, we will not get that set up and it was so what the whole journey was great as well just the, the, the unlock after unlock after unlock it was just a lot of fun to be a part of and be be involved yeah, in. looking looking at um ebay and stuff for, for the U, like uk sold stuff it's never gone above 600 quid it's like it stayed between five and 600 pounds yeah there's i've not i've not seen a single one for like a thousand pounds or anything yet so it yeah. has stayed over here it stayed pretty like reasonable well you know what i'm looking on the us ebay right now too and i'm gonna agree it's 510 on one right here, 450 for another, which I think, listen, that's, it is what it is, but, oh, there's a 700, there's a 750 here. Yeah. I mean, listen, fuck Walmart then. Cause I guess they just have an overpriced there. <laughs> I don't know how Walmart works. I think they have like, it's like, a, like an Amazon marketplace, their version. So some independent someone, seller. Yeah. Some D bag just listed yeah. it there for 999. But listen, if you can score a Sentinel for 450, I know it's pricey, but I think it's worth it. It's definitely. I actually, now that I'm seeing how much the price has dropped, I probably want to buy a second one as well now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Versus Different heads. This. Yeah, but that, that's, that's my it. list. Good that's list. it. Paul, good list. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much for, for joining us briefly, but amazingly on our on our one year anniversary. Um, we'll get you back on. Let's 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 oh. put a date in the diary. We'll get you go, get you back on. Um, it's always fun. Um, thank you guys. So yeah, no problem. Thank you. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Oh, thank you very much to Paul for doing that one as well, and some cool items on that on that list. Um, a lot of a things I'm never going to be able to afford. That's the, see, that's I was going to say a handful of things that I do have in my collection, yeah. which, which I'm quite chuffed about. Um,
but yeah, no, he's such a cool guy, and he's another guest that we're definitely going to have back at some point. He's yeah. he's coming back. Or a back musical somewhere. episode. He will definitely happen. be back. We'll just do like happen. a <laughs> Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer musical special. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. happening. Um, so obviously we've got a year ahead of us now. So we're we're week fifty two. So we're going to move into a, a new era of of Geek Week in Review. But we're going to keep things the same, a new aren't we? Era, I like that. No, but it's the new era, isn't it? So we've we've got our website. We've got a handful of other guests lined up. Um, there's another little surprise in a little bit. Um, but yeah, what were you saying before, Ryan? You were saying something about this this coming year. Ah, so yeah. So I had a little thought about what we could. You know, it's obviously whole year and you think about what we've got in this year and some of the stuff you would not in a million years think we would have got at all so i was thinking what if you could bring back a toy line or like a toy line or a franchise what would you bring back and it'd be interesting to see when we get to our second year anniversary if someone has actually picked up that license or brought something back in that year i'll okay. go first because Hang on, so I've is, already this, been... is this what we want or what we think we'll see a little bit of both a little okay. bit of both because my one is actually both i think it's something i would want to see come back and it's something i think will come back okay i've got two straight away that i've just thought of okay i oh. think that street sharks will come back oh yeah, i could see that Sh- Shark i bells. think there's i think yeah yeah <laughs> shark pass <laughs> that was, sorry that was that was our that was our group text name for a long time because we reason. kept seeing really bad oh, no, shock movies. No, it's because we went to see The Shallows with um. What's yeah, we saw. <laughs> yeah, we saw The Meg, and then we saw The Shallows, and then there was another <laughs> one we just, never got to see in the end. It was like Down Below or something. Forty-seven yeah. meters below, feet below. Yeah, so yeah. Then it became Shark Pals. It was um, just like let's so, go and watch films about sharks. And we changed the. Oh, we lost him! Back, 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 back. Oh, that was like what, the old days. What could hang on? Um, so Street Sharks. Do you think Street Sharks is coming back? Will you think the toy line or TV show? Because that was both. I think it will be both. I think both a toy line and a TV show will come back. And then I think my, my other one for what I predict will come, like for a TV show that will come back in a new form, is Stingray. Because I think with the way that we're moving into a more environmental sort of world, you know, people are being more environmentally conscious. I think a uh, Jerry Anderson show, but you know, it's all set about in the oceans and stuff like that. I think there's a real, I think there's a real sort of uh, thing. Like, so we had the CGI ca- um, Captain Scarlet, which was a success. CGI um, Thunderbirds, which was a success. So now it's, I think, time for Thunder uh, Stingray. Plus also that theme yeah. song was amazing. But I think it would work well. But that's my two predictions. So when we get to the second year anniversary, I'll either eat my hat or I'll be going, <laughs> I was right. Fair enough. Have you got any, Cyril? Do you want me to go? Yeah, the um, for me, I think the one that I think will happen is a Thundercats TV series picked up by Netflix that's in the animated style of He Man, so they can do a crossover. Oh, good shout! That so that, and good. then if if someone like Mattel p- picks up the toy line, that could make them similar to the Master style, and people would go nuts for that to have Lion-O I- versus He Man. I've got a graphic that novel somewhere, which is He-Man versus yeah. Thundercats. There's, there's yeah. some stories that I could use from the graphic novels and stuff. It would be very easy to put those two franchises oh. from the 80s together. That would be amazing. Show. I love that. Yeah. But the the one, the franchise that I want to come back and want to happen would be, again, I think something like a TV series, maybe Netflix could pick it up, Starship Troopers. But yeah. set, oh. don't, don't, try and, don't try and reboot it. Leave it as it is and just make it about the end of the mobile infantry again. And you could even have uh, what's called Rico come back and he can be the grizzled old captain this time. If you don't do it, I'll shoot you myself. He could do the whole spiel just like the guy did in the original film and he could have a cameo where he gets killed off and the new the new kid becomes captain or whatever. Did you, you could do it so series? easily. No, and I never anime, bothered with it. it yeah, was, the uh, Roughneck Chronicles, I think it was called. Yeah. It was the, one yeah. of the it was one of the very first all CGI series. It was around the time of Beast Wars mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It's um, it's an interesting watch. <laughs> it's like I've never, it's like I've never bothered with this with the um the sequels. To me, that film is just so iconic. I think they, they could do a very tongue in cheek remake of that, or like reimagining of it, especially with Netflix. They could get away with it a bit more and make it very politically modern and make it very you know tongue in cheek, edgy. You know what would show. really, you know what would really work is if they did a Netflix Amazon Prime esque mm. kind of TV show. 
in the style of like the original alien so it's yeah. not about all of the bugs and fire but just maybe one or two of the mobile infantry that are kind of stuck somewhere and there's a yeah. bug in the building and there's that because if they if they went down that line it could really reinvent the, the series because the same as same as tremors mm. starship troopers the original film was so iconic and so cool and mm. so brilliant but then all of the sequels and all of the attempts to kind of bleed that that cash cow out yeah. just fell flat and starship mm. troopers was one of them films as when i was younger i must have watched every single day i don't know i, I've, I lost count of how many times i've seen that yeah. film yeah. And it was not for the shower scenes. It was literally for the bugs. Like it was, you know, I just thought the it was brilliant. The two CGI movies are really good, actually. I would recommend them. Yeah, I might, I might give it a shot. <laughs> um, I might give it a shot. Tremors, though, I will defend Tremors 2 till I die. And the other ones Trem- I watch is background TV. Tremors 2 was good. Tremors 2 worked, yeah. Tremors 2 was a semi-decent state. But when they kind of went from the the Graboid to the, I can't remember what the second one was called. Uh, and then the uh, Ars Blasters. <laughs> the Ars Blasters were the third one, though, weren't they? And then so it's the Graboid to the something to the something, and then that one laid eggs, and that became a Graboid, and it just kind of. And I was kind of like, no, just the Graboids were scary. Like I remember watching that film with my cousin, and we were sat on the sofa with our feet up because we didn't want to touch the ground, which is a ridiculous concept. I'm really because gutted that they didn't do the sci-fi series the kevin bacon one have you seen the trailer for it that yeah. it looked incredible and looked scary but good it just oh, i was mortified they didn't bring that it was just so a excited. really good mix of a western and a monster film that original With film elements yeah and it's one of my favorite kevin bacon roles i'm not gonna lie like that when i when someone says kevin bacon i see him in a stetson fighting graboids that's that's where my head goes Fuck you. <laughs> um, no, let me forget by the way there is alien and there is predator news as well do not let me forget because we'll oh, i know the up. predator i wasn't gonna let the predator one go mate that one looks insane yeah. um yeah. but on my on my note so ones, yeah. toy lines and i think on the retro vintage <clears throat> three and three quarter inch kick that we're currently experience experiencing I think there's a real scope for Mask to come back with Ooh. the vehicles and the characters. Um, I just remember them being really cool toys, really cool play sets. And they had the cartoon as well that went with it. And I think that that could be reinvented. And if not necessarily reinvented, but re-released, because there'd be a lot of people from the 80s and, and early 90s that would kind of buy that stuff as, as reissued things, similar to the, to the three and three quarter inch. Um, mm. But the other one in the same kind of style would be Dino Riders. Do you remember Dino Riders? Oh, yeah. Now, Dino Riders, there is a massive gap in the market for Dino Riders right now. Like, I know a lot of kids that would go, like, what? Soldiers that ride dinosaurs and fight. Sign me up. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, Mask and Dino Riders, I think, mm. are... They weren't so huge that there's so many hoops to jump through, but I think that there's potential for those to be picked up by, even by someone like Hasbro. Like It'd be a cheap license to get, I reckon. Yeah. Hasbro could pick them up and add that to their, you know, you look at their G.I. Joe line, you know, all that kind of stuff. It'd be a very easy one to kind of sidestep into. as wishful thinking anyway. G.I. Jose. Speaking, um, speaking of wishful thinking, one thing that I would, I would absolutely die for it would be to the, for Star Wars to do a Star Tours either cartoon or something like a special That'd or some cool, form of animated or live action thing that's about Star Tours as a company like yeah. based on the droids like maybe even have get, get people who back to do Rex that'd be amazing that'd be really it's cool. my first time flying today guys just like, just like, that would be just amazing that would be really cool wouldn't it um, but while we're on the uh, subject of Hasbro, Star Wars, three and three quarter inch and all that kind of stuff. Let's go to our last segment, so our third and final guest. And it, of course, is uh, the wonderful uh, Steve Evans, um, who was one of our guests way back when. And I think if I'm going to say a favourite guest, I think Steve would be up there as definitely a contender. I just had so much fun with him on the show. Um, And the Behind the Toys (coughs) um, interview I did with him as well. 
ripped it off the card. That was it was just a yeah, it, moment. it was just Ooh. everything from him just kind of unboxing on the show to sending me figures over that kind of spurred a whole <laughs> a whole new collection, um, <laughs> which then also spurred Ryan on to complete his collection because all of a sudden it was like, hang on, mate, I've collected these longer than you, and you've got yeah, I, was, I wasn't a fan of that. <laughs> yeah, so, comp- I've got a hundred percent now, <laughs> by the way, hundred yeah. percent now. That's cool, man. I'm literally four figures away from 100. percent But, um, but yeah, Steve was definitely one of my favourite guests in the past, um, and he was kind enough to give us a top ten of his favourite uh, three and three quarter inch figures in his collection. So this is a really cool segment. So let's cut over to that one right now. Hello there. My name's Steve Evans. I am design director for Marvel Toys at Hasbro, and I believe it is somebody's birthday congratulations all of you at geek week in review jacob brian and super soul i don't actually know so- super soul's real name is it sorrel you don't look like a sorrel andrew dan brian kevin i don't know anyway um happy birthday to you. one year old today you big boys now aren't you big boys <laughs> anyway the guys have asked me to come up with my top 10 three and three quarter inch figures that i've Bought, discovered, obtained, liberated in the past 12 months. So let me take on a quick tour of my top 10 um, in the past year. Let's go. Let's see if we can do this in one take. My top 10 obtained, liberated, purchased, bought, stolen, found, whatever figures you want. They're all contained in here. We'll start at 10. We have Palatoy Action Force Ground Assault with incredible, I'm gonna, I can't even get that out, with incredible ladder in the backpack absolutely adore him he's cool number nine i'm going to be a little bit cheaty on some of these scales because three and three quarters is a very specific size but i'm going to go i've taken stepped into the fray on lord of the rings Gollum, i would say is more like a sort of three and three quarter inch even though the rest of them are like, like five inch so i love my Gollum. they're blooming expensive but i do want to get the rest of them so lord of the rings 1978 um ralph bakshi edition they're definitely there that's number nine and number eight <clears throat> we're going to go and see some stuff from Plastic Meatballs. I love Fruit Loops. I remember visiting America in 1983 and discovering Fruit Loops. And um, you have wonderful cereal over here. Not that I can eat it now because my uh, my heart sugar level is bad. But uh, my Toucan Sam from Plastic Meatball, I really love this range. I hope to see more. But he is in at number eight. At number seven, not quite three and three quarter, but most definitely within three and three quarter range. And it's amazing that I only got him in this last year is my old school Jedi Kenner Jabba the Hutt. Love him, I love the way uh, um, I love the way he sits and has his hookah pipe and his arms move and it really starts setting off and that's now got me into all the different creatures and rancors and things like that. So thank you Jabba for sending me deeper into my Star Wars figure collection. At number six, old but new. From our Marvel Legends 375 line, everyone should know that I do have a soft spot for Vision. Um, I think the, the symmetry of the costume and his cape, he, uh, he is a, a fond one of me for number six. And at number five, we stay with this range. And this was really difficult because I love our new range, particularly Thing, Goblin and Thor. But I think Thor is the one that I appreciate the most just in the way that he's sculpted and coloured and just really looks retro but still heroic. So Thor is at my number five. <clears throat> Clear my throat. At number four, we're going to go out of the case. The new Star Wars vintage retro collection, which I was uh, part of at the very beginning when we started making the, uh, the Star Wars redos, which incidentally, my original Star Wars were the 3D models that were scanned to create that first, first couple of waves for Star Wars and Empire. I really enjoy Wave 2 in particular, but out of all of them, my favourite has to be Boba Fett. I love the colours, I love the way that, um, it is just the shape of it. I love the fact that he's got these sort of the bulbous kind of, I don't know what you call them, pantaloons, I guess. Um, but he, I just love everything about him. I love the way he looks, I love the, the old retro backpack there. Um, so he's fabulous. Thought really, really great job on that, everyone. He's at number four. At number three, I'm going to cheat again at some sizes. Now, if you follow me on Mr. Stevie 18, you'll know that I've got into Smurfs recently. And yes, they are not three and three quarter inch, but there is one in particular that's a little bit bigger that I've been after for quite a while and found it difficult. So if we go over here to my Smurf village, 
at the back, you can see my cage Smurf, which is by far my favorite. And maybe it's near, not quite three and three quarter inch, but I'm gonna call it three and three quarter inch. So you can see him there being caught by um, Gargamel within my Smurf village setup. He was hard to get. And I must uh, say thank you to my friend, Emily, for helping me get him. You know who you are, Ems. Um, that leads us to the last two. So what is my, what are my top two three and three quarter inch figures? Well, I'm gonna go for a couple of rare ones. Rare, the first one, because it's a custom. It's not my Superman, my Christopher Reeve Superman Kenner, because that was over a year ago. But my good friend, Chris, at um, C. Kingogram, I always forget your handle, mate, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sure we'll put it in the, in the description, but he made a fantastic Batman 89, Keaton Kenner-esque, 3D printed, painted, card back made, uh, just genius. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, Chris. So that is my number two. So I didn't love it as much as my number one because my number one has taken me years to find. It's not a very old figure. It was made in 2008 um, by Lancet, French company. And it is based upon something I have a soft spot on, soft spot for, give you a clue. Well, it's not really a clue. It's telling you what it is. It's Asterix. I love Asterix, and there was a series of figures made in, as I said, 2008 by Lancet that are very comic accurate. Is it Obelix? No, because I've had him a while. Is it Getafix? No, I've had him a while. Is it the Legionnaire? No, I've had him. Asterix himself, which if I measure him, is about three and three quarters. I've spent years looking for this guy, and he's really hard to get. I got him about a month or so ago. I am so happy with him. I love Asterix. If you haven't read the books, Go and read them. They're really, really clever. Um, so there we are. We have my top 10. We have recap, ground assault. We have Gollum. We have Toucan Sam from Plastic Meatball. We have Jabba. We have, what have we got? We've got Vision at number five. At number, no, at number six, at number five, we have Thor. At number four, we have, that's hard to say, we have Boba. At number three, we have the Cage Smurf. At number two, we have Chris's Batman. And at, at number one, we have Goskini and Anderzo's Lansai Asterix. And there we have it. What more to be said? And there we are, I'm all out of breath now. Did that in one take, one go, one only, one time only, first birthday, number one, one time, first birthday. How else can I say one other than Jacob, Ryan and Sorrel, whatever the hell your name is. Um, you are top guys, number one guys. Uh, carry on with the podcast. Carry on being inquisitive and curious and fun and having frivolous times with the stuff that we love and we all collect. We all thank you, happy birthday, and I'll see you next year. Important update, I just had a text message from Jacob and he tells me that Super Sorrel's actual name is Ash. Kind of like Kevin better. That's Steve. There's, there's Steve. Thank you very much, Steve, for doing that one. Um, I love Steve's setup. I'm not going to lie. Like, I love the variety of things in his collection. And considering he's so well established, you know, 20 mm. plus years of Hasbro and Star Wars and uh, Marvel, his personal collection is so varied from, um, his you know, Smurf setup is insane. Smurfs, so good. Asterix, <laughs> DC, Star Wars, Lord Indiana of the Rings. Jones. Like, it's insane. But I think that's what makes Steve really cool is he is just a massive toy fan as well. So, um, and he now knows your, your real name, Daryl, as does everyone else <laughs> watching. <laughs> Yes. The secret has been unveiled. No, but um, <laughs> if I, they ever find I out my real name, I'm screwed. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know that he didn't know your name, but yeah, he uh, <laughs> he, he filmed everyone, his... everyone at Hasbro. <laughs> the emails I get from the company genuinely call me Supersol, and every every communication they call me Supersol because my email address is Supersol. So yeah. like I edited it years ago. When I first started, I took my actual real name off. So when it, when people get emails, it comes from Super Sorrel. Does that makes sense. Like you need to see it. So it looks it looks dead funny when people write back to me all the time. With, I need I need a name to address it to when I send this thing to you. Like, yeah. Like, oh yeah. Then I give them my name. They're all like, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
he um yeah no he he, <clears throat> he did his segment for us and then he sent me a message and he was like um i just need to double check what what Saul's name is because i've just it, in, in the segment i've kind of announced that i don't know so let me just know and that's why he, he put in that little bit at the end but um but yeah steve's a great guy um he's you know awesome guy and uh as i said i absolutely love his love his collection so yeah, there we go. So that's the uh, <clears throat> the third of our of our guest segment. So massive thank you to the three of those guys for taking the time out to do that. Um, before we go though, before we do round it up, Predator? we did mention Predator and Alien. Alien um, news, yeah. Which one do you want to do first? Let's do the Alien one because there's not much info on it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, just no, like no, I understand that we're referring to. Yeah, we. Yeah. Da, da, da. Uh, we're getting like a very much a, a new Alien TV series. Oh, cool. Which I, I think is going to be quite an interesting, like a live action one. Um, so it's going to be ep- obviously episodic, one story. I don't know when it's set. I don't know, <clears throat> but apparently, I think they're they're moving away from the Prometheus David era. I think they're going more just to one xenomorph, like more at, like actual eight, like original alien sort of style. Yeah. But um, I'm genuinely pretty happy about that because I think it would actually really work as a TV show. Like using yeah. the xenomorph in a TV show, I think could actually be a much better way of doing it, more like a horror series, than trying to cram in a whole another film where they have to explain the origins and face uggers and stuff like that. And there's much better yeah. cliffhanger potentials for like episodes easily. So I think that's yeah. really good. And then obviously we've got the news about Prey, which is the new Predator film, which isn't having a cinema release, which I'm no. really upset about. See, I'm not. It was straight to Netflix, isn't it? Disney Plus. Disney Plus. No, Disney Plus. Sorry, not Netflix. My apologies, Disney Plus. Sorry, don't don't fire me. Oh, but, I it, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I was really surprised, but I was really pleased because the thing is, is I know that I can watch that the minute it comes out. Mm. Like, I, you know, the day it comes out, I can watch it. And I just think it looks awesome. But like, it is... I, I don't even know where to even start. There's something really cool about seeing that preview, like that, that ancient version of Predator and yeah, yeah, it's, it's taking it back like to just someone trying to survive with not having all the latest technology and stuff like that. So, <clears> I think you know, it gets too far in the future, he kind of loses a bit of the well, we've got giant cannons and stuff like that. But actually, the, one of the greatest things about the first Predator film is obviously is that Arnie surviving that's what the bit that you know, it's them, it hunts them, and then obviously, you've got the bit with Arnie at the end with the, the handmade traps and the spike sticks and the, all yeah. that kind of stuff, you know. And that's kind of like <clears throat> all they have in this one because obviously that's that part of history. So no, the best, the best part of that original film was the typical eighties montage of Arnold Schwarzenegger's muscles close up, <laughs> pulling ropes. <laughs> yeah. In every one of his films, like Commando, <laughs> like it was just it was Dylan, like, you son of a bitch, like, and it's like, like it was, you know, the arm <laughs> lock thing. <laughs> uh, no, but Predator was brilliant. But shall I tell you what? Actually, my one of my favourite films in the Predators franchise is Predators. Yeah. Like, I Great love film. it. And it, people are really divided about it, aren't they? Like, some people love it and some people hate it. But there was something really cool about seeing that aspect of it. I absolutely love that film. Um, and I've got a feeling that Prey is going to kind of fall into that that kind of area where it's, a, apart from the main Predator kind of films, and kind of a, yeah, just a different. And they've already said mm. that the the predator in it is a different version of predator than what we've seen previously because mm. obviously it's it's older it's ancient it's you know it's you know we're going back a few hundred years in planet earth so do you know the name predator of the species itself, of predator i do something to my tongue that's why i kept saying predator because i was hoping one of you would mention yeah, it that's it yeah, that's it. It. yeah. it's just you know the talk about you toy know. lines Talk about toy lines though, as a child of the 80s, the alien oh, that Kenner line is awesome. The, the Kenner Alien, the and Kenner Aliens line, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Kenner Alien and Predator line, yeah. And they had the, the yeah. Hive Wars. Yeah. And even a little bit earlier than that, just the, the the standard alien figures. Like they were toys based on films that were not made for kids. Like, I remember the first time I saw Alien, but Aliens was cool it was army versus aliens essentially in space you know and there was something very cool about that but alien like the first alien film i would never forget seeing that that chest busting scene for the first time like 
and hey, let's go and buy some toys. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. What? Well, that's what um that's how <clears throat> reaction got their started because they the first thing they made was actually the abandoned three and three quarter inch line that Kenner made prototypes for and everything and never actually mm. got into production. And that's how Super Seven's reaction line, that's how that came about, was about doing them first. And expanded yeah. on it. But like I know what you mean. Like but you also had like Terminator Two, um, but then Rambo had yeah. a cartoon and toys called, you know, the Freedom fight, Fighters for Freedom or something like that. Um, yeah. But that is one thing you could do: Terminator versus Alien versus Predator versus Robocop, because you had toys would, for them. <laughs> like you put it into modern day kind of perspective, that would essentially be like us having toys aimed at children for things like Squid Game and oh, The so. Boys. Yeah, and like The Boys and Saw and stuff like that. Like adult it's head exploding content. Tommy. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> they still kind of do because if you go to like Smiths. Like Five Nights at Freddy's has a toy line that yeah. most kids are aware of, but yeah. that is not a game kids should be playing. There no. is some very weird things. Like, <laughs> I was about to sound very sinister. There's some very weird things down toy toils. No, what mm. I mean is like there is some very odd franchises, but also like there is just a lot of weirdness things. There's like these I can't remember what they're called. They're like weird creatures in boxes that look are all disfigured and stuff like that. And they, there's a quite a collectible toy line for like kids. And like, oh, like the ugly, called. ugly pets or something like yeah. that. Or yeah, ugly, and it's just. Ugly. I mean, I know we had Boglins, um, but like. <laughs> Boglins are making a comeback. Yeah. That surprise me. There's some weird. What are, um, been around for a while. What's that blue thing? I keep thinking Eagle Piggle, but it's not Eagle Piggle. Yeah, in the Night Garden. No. <laughs> Eagle Piggle is from the Night Garden, but there's that blue. Oh, the big long armed thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, what is, what is that from? It's not from anything. It's like a thing on YouTube that went around. It's like the Momo thing, and then yeah. people, then 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 popular YouTubers make videos about it. Kids see the videos, and then someone bloody picks up the toy line for it. Uh, That's how these things usually go now? down. Um, it's something like Eagle Piggle. I can't remember now. Oh man, I definitely um, can't remember. What's it? We're getting old now. Ash, our man on a chair. Huggy Wuggy. <laughs> huggy Wuggy. Oh, let's be honest. But yeah, Huggy Wuggy. But that's like, and that's a jump scare kind of game where you're walking down corridors and any jump down mm-hmm. chases you and stuff. And it's it's not aimed at kids, but there are children with soft toy like plushes, mm-hmm. and that's their that's their soft toy. And you see them that's kind of carrying it around. Annoying. It's horrible, right? It's it's yeah. That's but it. The, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's a that's a that's a decent one. You you dive deep into the huggy buggy corridor and you'll see some really <laughs> disturbing ones. Um, yeah. So these yep, things he's, fa- he's found it. He's found it. I don't like it. I don't like it. To go back to the usual like point, it. as much as we say like there isn't these weird things for kids anymore, there are still some questionable toy lines out there. We're just there not. They're just not. They're just not as. They're just not based on the movie franchises like we're used to. No, it's more yeah. modern versions, isn't it? But I do wonder what our parents were smoking, to be fair, because, <laughs> like, if they released a Squid Game toy line, my kids wouldn't have it, because I'm like... Yeah, but then you go to Comic-Con kids. and you see little kids dressed in the hot pants oh, I know. costume, and that's just mm. wrong and weird. I'm just kind of like, read a comic book, and I know yeah. that she didn't originate from comic book, just read some of the storylines that circulate around Harley Quinn. And you will yeah. not dress your child up as Harley Quinn. No. Your, your child says, I want to dress up as Harley Quinn. You say, mm, pick someone else. <laughs> it's... The, the jester costume, not the hot pants. That's, that's yeah. Wrong. Oh, yeah. You can, have the, you can have the animated Harley Quinn any day yeah. of the week. But. Yeah, the. Um, no. What were we say? I forgot. I was trying to thought. Freaking COVID. No. Toy lines. But yeah, but there are uh, there are Just a lot. Of... Things. Ash. Toy lines, films. <laughs> the sound oh, sound. so like, I was to say like, but when we when we were kids, do you not remember? I'm not sure how your parents were, but I, like my parents didn't care about certificates of films. They never really, and like my parents wouldn't watch anything first and then show me it. They just go, oh, this film's on with your dad. It's about people killing aliens. Let's watch. And yeah. I'd sit and watch it with with my dad, and if I got scared, I would just go away. He's like, well, yeah. he'd like walk upstairs and see you later. Sometimes. Child's play. Child's play. <laughs> terrified me. I was like, terrified me. I saw like the original Freddy films and stuff when I was about seven or eight. You're like it's yeah. crazy, really. When you think about it. Yeah. I no. I no. 
I just, or like, I don't know. this is really old school, but my, like, I remember my dad would tape things on like Sky, Sky Premiere or something, wherever it was back then, like the original Sky movie channels, set the damn thing to long play and go to bed. So it, I'd, I'd get like the film yes. I wanted, plus like the first hour and a half of whatever came on afterwards. And that, that, like, as a kid, I remember watching like the first 40 minutes of like Friday and films like that. Like, I should not have been watching it like age six. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yep. uh, it's like, Dad, you introduced me to these films, you recorded them. <laughs> yeah. But it was, you know, tough enough. Like, come on, like, come on, kids nowadays. Like, don't don't come at me acting like you're all tough. You did not watch Child's Play at age six. You know, you, you were not introduced to Friday when you were like, Prime you weren't there, man. Like, you don't let's, know. Be, let's be honest. So you didn't yeah. you didn't lie to your mother to make her record South Park and tell her it's definitely a kids thing, and then she watched it with you and wanted to like murder you. <laughs> I remember never forget that. The first episode of South Park was like, oh, this is a nice cartoon. Okay, and then she left me alone, and then she heard the language coming out of it. it was like, what are you watching? It's South Park was a game changer. Yeah. <laughs> that was a game changer. I think that I don't think my parents fully realized what it was until no I bought the it wasn't until I bought the, the album and was blaring out Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls song. <laughs> and they were like... I've still got the cassette this, single yeah. of that. And they were like... With Cartman on the other side. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the true thing is, I really like that song. I was like, this yeah. is a really cool song. Like, My favourite uh, that I played over and over again was Wycliffe John and South Park. Got a bird in your yes. bubble good. Yes. That was my favourite thing. And I, I am streaming that album for my car now. <laughs> like It's time to educate some people. But yeah, but my, my parents were like, this is not necessarily appropriate to like listen to in the car. And I was like, no, he's singing about his chocolate balls that he makes. Like, in the, like if you watch the video and listen to the, like, and I was trying to sell it to him and they were like, no, we can hear what he's saying. Believe me, we know what it means. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Well, look, I've watched nice it now. Try. So what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, it is a different, it was a different era now. And especially as a parent now, I'm like, I would never dream of letting my kids watch Charles play. Like, not even the reboots, like, not even the comedy versions. Like, it's... Uh, well, because, hey. of, because of my toy line collecting and stuff, like, my daughter from a young age has been aware of who, a like, she knows who Alien and Predator are. But she's never seen them. But she knows what the figures are, yeah. and she'll sometimes she'll play with them in my room. But she's got no idea. All she knows is the alien predator to fight one another. That is as much as she knows. Yeah. But like it's, it's funny that she's aware of them, and she's like yeah. as young as she is. I think that's funny. But then, like, if I really, if I'm really going back, like the Hammer horror films when I was really young, like yeah. they were my bread and butter. Like I loved those films, and I would sit there and watch them like over and over and over again, and that kind of was the gateway into the scariest stuff too it's like oh if he's watching dracula like you know that was what we watched when we were younger as a scary film and it's not that bad so yeah yeah nightmare on elm street what, what's the harm it's gonna do <laughs> yeah i was the same with the um, late night tnt after the wrestling had finished then you'd get like elvira coming on your screen introducing like oh. thousand, uh, like no uh that vincent price film uh, like things yeah. you know, all these really random old films with vincent price in. Yeah, and she and she'd be on that sofa, and I was like, "This is a bit too seductive for you, son. Let's uh, throw this off." <laughs> <laughs> and there was born the long-lasting <laughs> love affair for <laughs> for Sorrel <laughs> and Elvira. Um, yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I think mean, that's about it for the week. I think that's so, kind of your your guys your guys' aliens news wasn't the same news that I had then, which is quite. Funny. Oh, you, you guys were about a TV series. You got the video else. game. Yeah, the video game got announced this week, didn't it? Da yeah, da the, uh, the top down. Yeah, the top down one. Shooter game, set yeah. set like a bit like the uh, Colonial Marine style. It's like set in the aliens world, um, like style of storytelling. It's a top down shooter. Looks really fun. Uh, big CGI trailer actually. came out. Speaking we said this last uh, time when Colonial Marines came out, and it was dire. Yeah, it wasn't. It the wasn't funny thing about that, it? right? So I never played that when it came out. I played it for the first time about four or five years later because mm. I got it for so cheap. And I actually had fun with it, but obviously because I had forgotten what was promised and everything like that. Yeah. So I just picked up because it was cheap and I liked Aliens. And I was playing it. I was like, oh, this is quite just a fun, inoffensive shooter sort of thing. Yeah. And then when I went back and I was looking at it online, I was like, why is it so much hate? And then, then I remembered <laughs> what, what was promised and what was delivered. And it, I kind of forgot that the game actually isn't... A, 
as old as I thought it was when I was playing it. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's what people were worried about. I yeah, remember that my... trailer though. Like the trailer for that game with like the beeping and the uh beep, 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 Yeah. Beep, hey, isolation's the beep, game to play, man. Yeah, isolation's good. But um, I, I always I always liked the Alien vs. Predator a video game where you got to play as all three, the Colonial Marines, the yes. Alien and the Predator. That was an amazing game, really. Yeah. It was like three campaigns in one. It was a, su- su- such a good game. That was a good game, actually, yeah. That was a very good game. Oh, um, we're all going to sit there and go and try and find it and see if we can play it. Well, we've got one of those. we got one of those Mega Drives, you know, the uh, like the ones that just plug into your telly. It's preloaded mm. with, like, 50 games or whatever. And I... It's actually a lot of fun to sit down and play with my kids. And it's got like all the Sonics on it and like Streets of Rage, all the Golden Axes, Shinobi, like, you know, all the old school games. And just sitting there and playing with them. And I'm just thinking, these are crap. Like, <laughs> these are like, you know, compared to today's game standards, like what, what kids are used to as a computer game. And I'm sitting there trying to say to them, look, Golden Axe, Golden Axe is, is where it's at, mate. And they're like, this is so repetitive. You're running this around a so... screen. Going, yeah. Oh yeah. For a kid, like... they wouldn't have the, the sort of the joy out of it. They they, don't, they didn't understand. You know, there's there's yeah, one the game. Beating a game. There is one game that I would still to this day I think play to death, and that was the Simpsons arcade game. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. God, the yeah, amount of fun. money I spent on that game, and I still didn't get past like level three. It was just like, but you could play as Marge with the Hoover and Bart with the skateboard, Lisa with the saxophone. Brilliant game, absolutely brilliant game. Yeah, staying um, up till staying up till stupid o'clock in the morning with my cousin playing uh, t- uh, Turtles as well. T- 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 Turtles in Time, I think it might have been back then. You got, well, you got the new one coming out, haven't you? A Shredder. I know, I'm so out. excited. The, that looks a super cool. mega pack, but that mega pack that's like yeah. potentially gonna get. No, I can't afford that. That's insane. The, I'd love the to. Is- I is that unless you're a diehard fan, the the extras in the box don't equate to the price you would pay. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I couldn't justify yeah. it because I'd be like, look, it's this much money, but I've got this much merch with it. As a Turtles fan, you could go, yeah, this is worth the money that they're asking. But to a wife, it would be a very hard sell. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a very, yeah, look, these pin badges are really cool. And I, that is not two hundred dollars worth of pin badges, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, never mind, never mind. But, um, but yeah, uh, there's why, one more thing I suppose that we haven't spoken about. Have you you played the new season of Fortnite yet? Sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Darth Go Vader, Darth Vader is the uh, is the big unlock at the end. Like I've got a very strict rule when it comes to Fortnite. I play with my son. Right, you need to get on it, mate. Trust me, it's a game changer. No, <laughs> but I've got so many things to play. I play it with my son. It's such an easy put on, put off game. Um, <laughs> and my strict rule is that I won't have a skin or I won't chase a skin if it's not somebody that would have a gun naturally. So mm. like, I don't want to be, much as I love Spider Man, I haven't got any Spider Man skins because there's no point. Why would I have Spider Man running around with a sniper rifle? And that's my only problem with Darth Vader is I'm like, he looks really cool, but. He's not bazooka and stuff looks weird. It, he's not going to look cool running over a pump shotgun, like you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, but no, I uh, I think it's cool. And there's the Indiana Jones levels coming up as well yeah. soon. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool to finally kind of get Darth Vader in it, and it's everything is Star Wars, isn't it? Everything is Vader and and yeah. Obi Wan at the moment. So ever since ever since I got the B the the you know, the BK skin, that has been my favorite. That's been my one. Oh, I've but... never stopped playing as you know, Black Curry stand. Ever since you got announced on the game, like, yeah, I'm buying that. Yeah, it's, it's just the reason I, I thought about that was because you talk about Predator and Terminator and stuff, and they're two of my favorite skins. We've got the Terminator yeah. from the uh Mando Wave, was it the Mando yeah. series? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Um, T-100. and I've got the I've got the, the T100 one, um, yeah. and you know, I put like a backpack on him and it, I've just kind of modded him up so he just looks like this mega hench T100, but he's my. My skin of choice at the moment. Um, so yeah, see so if you see a T one hundred running around, it might be me. Never mind. Um, but yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's 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 clear a week there. So we have got two. Um, let's let, yeah. Let's round it up here. So for two, we've got two things. Two things. First one is we're going to have a bit of a facelift. We are going to say goodbye to current layout, and we're going to move into the second year with a new layout. So. With a click of a finger, we'll swap it around. Ready? Oh. 
<laughs> Whoa, look, we're all pretending that we can see it, but we can't. Um, yeah. But yeah, so this is the new Geek Week in review layout. So we're we're just we're just upgraded. We've had the old one for a year. You know, might be a, a yearly thing. We change it around. So <laughs> this is our new layout. Um, and the second thing is we're going to close off with one final guest. Um, one final guest announcement, which I'm really pleased that we got. It, he did it for us. Um, previous guest of ours, um, Agent M himself. I'll let, let him say his piece. Um, but until next week, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all of those things. Give the guys a follow. Um, and until next week, keep it geek. <laughs> oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Uh, congrats. Geek Week in Review on a full year of doing your thing, being cool. I'm Marvel's Agent M, aka Ryan Panagos, aka AvengerCon announcer. Uh, I'm just here in my office reading some light comics. Uh, maybe you've heard of the Avengers. I've got Flushy, The Toilet, a prop from Marvel's Punisher, and some friends here. It's a good time. Be well. Geek Week in Review.